Hey everyone, welcome back to your Netcode Help channel. I am Frederick and I'm happy to have you here today. In this video, we are going to continue on a project that we started already and that is an employee management system using Blazor Assembly as a client and our .NET Web API as a backend for data management. So in this video, we are going to have a look on how to perform crowd operations on all the various aspects. Today, we have a lot of work to do. You see that I want to check what we did in the previous video. You see we have the department and maybe we might change the, there's a title here. We might change it. You can see we have general department. We have various departments. We have branch. Also, we're going to have, um, country, city and now, um, town. Okay. All these are going to be cascaded. And, um, this time around, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be creating our service and also we're going to implement this service in the client. And you're going to perform all the crowd operation. That is a create, read, update, and delete. So a manager or a user that can add department, can update department, can also um, delete department. This applies to all of the various sectors in here. Department, general department, branches, countries, cities, towns. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Now, this is what uh, the next thing to do here is from the country and town and the cities. You can see there are some API that we can even call or there's some app that we can call to get the countries. But here, we want the company to add their own countries. It might be that not all the countries that they need, uh, they have branches or they have employees in. So they want to add a um, respective or uh, what they want, required countries with their various cities and town. Okay. So that's what we're doing for now. Maybe if later on, they want us to include, include that. We can also make that possible. But for now, let's focus on the CRUD for this. And also, see, when you check the administration, we have this user. So the administrator can able to also change the role of a user to an admin or to any other role as far as the role has been created. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. You can do any of the following to su support this channel. You know, you can subscribe and hit on the notification bell. So you never miss out any of our upcoming content. And also, you can like this video by clicking on the thumbs up icon beneath this video. You can also buy a coffee to support this as well. And if you want to do that, check the video description. The link is over there. All right. So I do offer training sessions for people or coaching or mentoring, whatever, for people who are interested in Blazor and .NET technologies, talking about the Blazor server web assembly, um, .NET web API for web service and so forth. So check the description today. Um, I have the, the link over there or that email link. You can write me through it. All right. You have a lot of work to do. So let's quickly jump to what you're supposed to do today. And now let's start. So you better get some, some food and eat and get <laughs> better because you're going to work today a lot. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's see. Now I have to close this up and because this is what we did, um, the previous videos. So if you haven't watched any of them, please check the description. I have the links over there for you. So when you go through the previous project, is it previous lesson or previous project? The same project by previous lesson, isn't it? <laughs> Don't mind me. So when you go to the previous lesson, that's what we've done so far. We created our generic controller and now we are inheriting the other controllers from. Okay. So this is a generic controller. It has all the CRUD operations um, in here. Aside from that, we created our inter generic interface and I we created separate uh, repository which each inherit from that generic interface. Now this is going to be the server side. So if I run this and I run the API, now you see the API, we have all the CRUD in here for branch, city, country, department, general department, town, and etc. But when you go to the client service or the client section, it is not consuming this API. So let's have a look on how to do that. But first of all, we have to create our DTOs to handle that. And also we have to create a service in the client, which also going to have an interface and implementation. But maybe I'll try much as possible to create a generic service and generic interface. So that we're going to have the interface once created and that we can be using them multiple times because you now we have a lot here to do. Department, country, um, 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 what else? City, brands, and etc. If you are to create the interface for each of them it's going to take us about three days to finish this okay <laughs> so let's have a look on how to create this generic interface for service and also the implementation 
so we can inject them very simple way and also try to use them so let's go to the service that's a client library wherever you have this service now in that let me just close this okay so there's a server there's a client library as you can see from here now you see we have this implementation and the contract from the service folder inside this contract you see we have one default um, service in here there's an interface service and this for account authentication so we don't want to add authentication system to our the other ones okay because authentication is very important and i want to handle that uh, specifically in application so we are not using the you know you're not inheriting from the same crowd or the same interface that you're going to create no we're not doing that so let's see once you have eight separate interface created let's create the other interfaces for the the other guys I, I, I spoke about, general uh, department, department, branches, countries, cities, and etc. So let's add a new item here. And now this item is going to be an interface. So take note, you have to choose an interface for this. So do we have interface here? All right, so now I'm going to give you the name as I generic service interface. So you can give it any name of your choice. By right here, I generic service interface. Now in that, it's going to inherit from a T object. So let me just grab this here. So we make this as T because you're going to pass in. It's a generic. So the T here stands for um, a model. Okay, so we're going to pass in separate models, individual models, different models. So we are not making a specific here. Here we make it as a generic, general one. So any one that you pass in is still going to work. Okay, so once you have this, it's a public type. And let's specify our this um, or our method in here. So we see from here, I have this. So this is a tax of get list of T. So that's a get all. And we pass in the base URL. We have get by ID, um, general response, and that's for insert. We have update, and then we have delete by ID. Now the next question is: I believe you guys you do understand this, right? But maybe we're asking yourself: Why are we passing base URL as a parameter to this? Yes, the reason why I am doing it, or you and I we are doing it, is that this is going to be a generic. Generic inside its implementation, we need to call the API service, isn't it? Now the API service, since we are creating this interface, we want to also create generic interface, generic imp implementation. Okay, so we can be using it, um, we can create it once and use it all over. So we have to make a specific to their respective base URL because they are not, they are not having one URL. The API is an API slash the controller name. Now we have general interface controller. We have no general department controller. We have department controller. We have branch controller. We have country controller. We have department controller. We have um, city controller. Okay. And now we have town controller. And I'm going to, we're going to also have user controller. So this means that we are not having one specific um, uh, API that we're going to handle all this. So we're going to have separate controllers and in that you have to specify the URL. So that's the reason why I put the URL in here. So we're going to create a separate class and I'm going to store all the URL in there. So as soon as we call this method, we pass in the URL and that's our very simple one. Okay. So this, don't worry about this. As soon as we create this and start working on this, it's going to make clear to you and you're going to love it. Trust me. Okay. So once you have this, we are going to create our implementation and this is also going to be a generic implementation. When you check the server, you can see that we created only the generic interface and I created separate implementation to handle that. But this time I don't want to create different implementation. I want to create one implementation which is going to handle all the other uh, models that we have. Okay. Then, so let's see how to work on that. We go to the same implementation and we have to create our own class which is going to be generic service implementation. So from the contract implementations, right click here, then let's add a class. This is going to be generic service implementation. It's going to inherit from this a generic type. So in here, what are we doing? We can just specify changes to public 
and at this house you heard from the interface that we have created i believe you can do that so pause the video and i'll do it and let's see are you done did you get the same thing as this <laughs> oh that's fine okay so now we have this we have to inherit from this generic interface here we specify the t object in here and at this too since i'm going to make it as generic you need to also specify the t i believe you know this get http client this returns two methods the first method here is going to be the public and then the private if i click on pip definition you know we have what public where's the public this we have public and then we have private this is a private one okay so from the private one it gets from the local storage the token from the local storage append it to the header then it returns as an http instance okay from the public two it just returns just an http client from the client that we created using the http the http client factory yes <laughs> okay so the http client factory we returns an instance and that is all so here we are not spe specifying any header what we're going to do here is in case the header we have a header attached already uh, then we want to remove the header because when calling a public http client we don't want to add any header because it's unnecessary so we want to trim it and i'll make it simple as well if you don't know how to work on this we've done this earlier in the third or the fourth video or the fifth video well i'm not actually sure maybe the third video so you can check this out i have other video links beneath this so please check it out in there okay so once you have this we have to implement all the interfaces for this okay so we're going to implement it one after the another don't worry but i can click on control period and um generate or implement all the interfaces we're not going to do that so let's see now aside from doing this you can also implement you can also create constructor and i'm passing this you know there is just a c sharp version 12 primary constructor that is what we are using i keep saying in all my videos since this c sharp version 12 was released so if you're watching my videos you know what i'm talking about okay this is a primary constructor so we are using making things easier and more friendly to us okay so the first thing that we're going for here is the delayed by id or should we start from crap so create isn't it let's have a look so that's going to be the insert we have our so this is going to be create okay so this is our create now in our create we have the insert t item and you know it, it has in this base url it must be an async since it is a task getting data from the local storage oh, local storage local database right so you see we are getting the private http client because from this insert it is only authenticated person can handle this admin or anybody whom the admin has delegated power to that's the person can have access to this so if you just bump into the app and i want to insert data no it's not going to allow you because you are not indicated you don't have the right to do that so we get a private http client which i'm going to append http oh, 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 oh. i do make errors here http right which is going to append the token to the header of this uh, client now i'm not going to say http client anymore i'm going to say client okay so if i say client you know what i mean http and <laughs> that okay so we're going to make a post async to the base we are that we specify and now the route here all going to have the access to this route as add okay so all they have it add and i pass in the model in here as an item if you want to check out this when you go to the control that we created from the generic you're going to understand this from the last video we did that so see this is a generic controller and i can see all of them this is an all to get all delayed by id single by id then add so all of them going to implement this route is it endpoint yes so that's what we are doing here we return the results catch the results and i return peacefully with no issue aside from that the next thing is read so let's say this is read all so with the read all what can we do in here do you have any idea can you do that yourself well <laughs> pause the video try that and let's see <laughs> are you done how was it or should i continue on okay so this is what we're having for the read is very simple we get the same private and now we have to return this but you know i want to I want us to catch this to get this now issue so let's say results equal to this then let's return results it's really okay so that's the read then we're going to have read single by id 
you want me to pass in the ID? Okay, I'll do that. So we're going to read by ID. And now in here, you see that from here, we are specifying the base URL to each endpoint or each uh, interface method. So you can see from here, we have the same thing. And I want us to cache this, cache this, cache this. So var results equal to this. Then let's return results with no issue. Save that. So that is it. We specify, we pass in the ID, and now here you can see we are specifying the base single and then the ID. Don't forget the controller single dot ID, isn't it? Fine. Let's move on. Now the next thing here is we have this read single ID, and um, so we have create create read update. So this is going to be an update. Okay. So update, and now this is going to be model. We are going to pass in an ID here. It's going to be the whole model. Okay. And with that update, let's see. I believe as for the update, it's very simple that you can work on that. You're just going to use put at async, and that's what we have in here. Put adjacent async is an update, it's an async task, and you can see we have the same base, and then this is a model. As you can see, it's coming from this T. It's an instance of this T object. Okay, so when you check here, you get a private HTTP client. Um, maybe it's, we may ask yourself, can we cache it once and be using it? You can try it yourself, okay? So you can call this once. You can see anytime I make a call here, we are creating a private, 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 private. Can we make it one? Yeah, we can. You can create a simple method here and I return that. And you can use it in here. Well, try this and let's see. Now let's see. So here we have this var result as usual. I want to catch this to remove this null boy issue. And I return results peacefully with no issue. Okay. So using put adjacent async, passing the base URL and the item, and that is all you read the response and I return in the form of a general response. Okay, so aside from having this, what else? Crad. So we have for you and now D, that is a delete. Now this has to take in with an ID. I hope you know that. So from the ID, we can then have the first method that I wanted to add. <laughs> so this is the first method that I wanted, but it's gonna be the last one. Delete my ID is a tax of async, and I can see we're passing the ID. And you're using delete async, not delete adjacent async. Delete async. Read the response. So var results equal to then in here, let's return peaceful results. Has no issue with it. Okay then we are done so this is going to be the base for every model okay so every model is going to have the same thing create read update and then delete create read update and delete find single find all if you want to have a specific one then you can create a specific interface and um try to link it up later on maybe we're going to have a look on um something like that later on in the near future okay but for now let's focus on this i believe this is very simple and clear to you all right, that's fine. So let's save this in here. Now, once you have this, we need to register this. We should not forget this. Okay, so that's very important. We have to register this in the program.cs file in the client service or the client section. So in that, let's see how to work on that. But before we do that, we need to specify, we say it needs a T value. So we have to specify the various T values in there. Now let's go to the program dot cs from the client server no this is a server so let's close this now there is a client and this is a client let me open it close this library from the program dot cs file we are going to specify them here you know that we have this the interface specifier from this user account and now with the various repositories or interface so we have this for general department department and branch you can see we specify this general department as a model now we have it in here from the implementation, which also needs the same model. So the interface and the implementation both need model. So passing the same model in there. Do not say general department or and passing branch here. No, you're going to confuse the app. Okay. So it will never work. So you have to specify the same thing. Then department to department, branch to the branch. You see, we have the same generic by using it multiple times. Okay. So this is going to be for what general department, department and our branch. But if you ask yourself, well, we have country, we have city, we have a uh, town. 
pause the video and then try that i give you one second it's up are you done let's see if we're able to do that the right thing so the same thing is in here well well done i believe we got it right country country town town city city and that is it okay so maybe you're going to also add employee so let's also add an employee to this because so we don't come here again to specify this we have an employee employee and that is it so here i'm going to specify an employee okay so let's save this the next question is when you check the interface it needs base url you have to specify to this anytime that i make a call to this okay we're going to inject this um, interface and uh, it's um repository or eight implementation class in the component the razor component so in this we have to inject or you have to call the you have to or you have to pass in the base url to it so how can we do it it's not better that we create another class which can be a static or a constant class so we can include or we can handle all the links in there yes it will be let's, let's do that let's go to the client library you see we have helpers folder now within helpers let's create one class let's name this as a constant constant not the name constants okay this constant and now we can specify all our constants in here constant um links or this is going to be an api route so you can see we have it's a static class and the name is constant we have public constant you see general department so there's a there's an api route you can see you can see are you getting it that's fine isn't it so are you okay with it all right i believe it's clear let's save this anytime that we inject the interface we have to also call this because they work hand in hand if there's no constant there's an api call because there's no route to work on okay so there must be this and the interface in here so now in order for us to have this work we need to inject this in the import.razor file now when you do that it's going to make it as a public to the whole component that you're going to create even the feature component that you're going to create so it is a matter of that putting it in there so let's see from the client service or the client section go to the import.razor here let's put them here so in here we're going to make some nice arrangement so you can see it well okay i don't want to add them together so it confuses you no i don't want to do that i want to make it very simple and readable to you um here we have you know we have this authentication state provider and that's for this you know it's already we've done this in the authentication system this navigation manager is a default one so you know this now in the authentication service or authentication services we created we need to inject it in here and that is it um i use account service and the account service we've done this already now what we're going to do here the next year is we're going to be using um sf dialog service so from that dialog service we have to include it here uh we go to install this i think you installed this already or haven't we let's see okay so using pop-ups we have this already installed because that's what we've been using for the add or register and i give another response and aside from that let's have our general department and other branch um and etc okay so we pass it here we have a general department department and our branch we need to use this model so not to use that it is coming from control period let's see this where it is coming from from entities Aside from having this, we need to include our U, the next one. So you can see the same interface. We are using it for all the models that we've created, almost six models. General department, um, this is a GD, D, a branch for B, C, C, T, right? Country, city, town. We have all them used from the same generic interface. And we need the last part, and that's going to be the employee. So we have also this and this is going to be an employee too and that is this an employee okay so we have this set and done now let's go to our components and start consuming this so when we check 
this pages you know we have department in here and now this department we have this general department dollar component isn't it so here we have the dollar component and now there is a page the dollar is what you're going to use for add and for update and now we have the page to handle or to display all the list of the various department general department that we have I want us to just format the the location here well we want to actually group them very well so you know from this account let me close this up so if we check here the department should be in the content page so let's move that folder inside this content page okay so it's in here now we can see from the demonstration we have a table banner and that is the table that's going to display the total um, employees and etc so here we want to move this to the other folder okay so now let's remove this administration so you can see when you open the content if I, if I open the pages we have account pages that's for authentication we have content that's the actual component which is going to be rendered on the screen for the user anytime we have other pages these are the, the supplementary pages that we need in order for this to work and we have this authentication page counter whether we don't need any of them so we can remove this this weather too maybe well we use that for testing so we are done with the testing we can also remove this weather okay so you can see we have this the authentication page is going to be the let's say outside here because that's going to be the first thing to even work on before you're going to have access to the content and the other pages so let's open each let's click and let's see in case we have header specified on top we can just remove that and I'll specify all the headers in the program oh, the program import.razor so from the general dialog we have all this we're going to clear this because we are going to specify them inside we've done this in the program so that's the import sorry let's save this and there won't be an issue here we have this already as you can see so that service it's in there we have the general department too and now with this we are going to also remove this except the the interface for this i disposable now the department service we have to include department service inside let's see where to work on the department state okay so that is a, the department state from the app state so we're going to uh, work on that this from the application state folder in here and that is where it's coming from so we're going to work on that soon you go to the home page and now here too we want to remove all this okay so we have this set and i think all done so i check our uh, login and uh, uh, register we can also remove this because we have this already so we want to remove we want to make them clear you do the same thing and then here we have to remove this dialog service and also this that's fine all right so account session done content pages are department and home page also done now when you check the department and on the, the general dialog it's also done mm, let's see the other pages from the button profile drop down we do not have any header table banner yes authentication page yes so we have to also remove this because we have it specified already in there okay so once you have this uh, let's see from the app state we want to um check this that from the client so you see you have the application state you want to rename this and then make it not only app state but it's going to be all states okay so you want to create one class for all so all states so let's check from the general department um general department page where we use that all state or oh, that's application state let's figure things out in there okay so here we're gonna use all state okay so this is what we need to use all state now when you click on this all state we what are we using this for this is what we're going to use to hide and now show the component if a user click on it it's going to hide and show based on 
um, the the movement okay so here we have to use an action which going to notify a component um, and also going to render it based on what we have specified okay so this is going to be the general department click and we have um, reset or to set this to false default and now we want to show the specific one with this we can modify or make a few changes in here so we have our action st st uh, state already and this action is a scope action meaning it's going to be available for the entire scope so i can say it's a scope action here so from that you're going to have this general department now this general department i want to modify something small in here so for this we can say this is general department and i give it a title in here as a general department so this action instead of saying general department action we want to say action general action okay so we invoke it here we show only general department if you want to show that that is the general department so you can see we're going to have one uh, the base page and we can be showing and hiding this department general department department branches cities country and etc so you want to make a dynamic movement um, with the pages okay so we have this for all the department we have to also create one for the department itself then from this action meta sense a scope we have to use it or we can use it all over so here is a scope and you can see show department two then we're going to hide the rest and now show all so let's say from this we need to add branches so this is the branch we show only branch as well we show only branch as you can see show branch is set to true okay set the rest to false and i show branch set to true invoke this so any pages and subscribe to this going to render retrieve the current value and now use it based on what you want the page to be done or to be done or to do so we have this country and at the show country we have we invoke this action in here if you don't understand this don't worry let's let's finish this and now when you start implementing this you're going to love it trust me you keep loving this project till we finish <laughs> okay so you have the city show city set to true and now we want to reset all to force then we have our town so there's also the town we have it set here show town to true and we see the same position that we are doing just that here we need to specify the the specific um property that you want to set in the form of a boolean type and this is going to be the user so if i want to manage user add or delete user i can have to show this on the screen and now this is what i am using to show show user we show the user set to true and the last one here is an employee so show all employees this method is going to be visible to all the users or managers also to the admin as well and now the last one here it is this that is a reset or department we want to set all department to force so let's say if i click on show town show user is already open i want to close it so i have to call this method which defaultly closes all the method then when they come here show user will write the first method that I show user set it through then only this will be will be shown if i click on this show user is also true if i click on show town this true reset all method so close all then only pop up the show town i believe this is clear now that's right thank you that you've understood it okay so we have this state created and now we have to inject this state in the import.razor2 so go to this import and now let's also inject the state here so we can be using it um, all over in our components or the application so this state we're going to make this as a nav bar so where should i even put this aside from this i think authentication first so let's put this here as inject all states then all state did we change this okay so we have this our states created we have not included the folder reference so let's do that and that's a nav bar nav tabs nav bar tabs communication state handling okay so this is a component or it's the state container handling with this action which invokes anytime the value in that component gets changed and the page subscribing or the subscriber get notified we rendered and i'll get a current value and i'll use it very simple um that is what it is doing
It's spent 34 minutes now. Take some break and I'll come back. I'll give you five minutes. <laughs> okay. Time is up. Now let's continue on. So let's go to, let's start working on the department. So we go to this department um, page. Now this department, we have the page and the dialog. The dialog is what we're going to use to add and um, perform all the crowd. You know, we add it here now. We can add from the previous video. We see that here. If I click on save, we check if department name is not specified. We want to tell the user something by using this dialog service. But in case everything is working as expected or it is in order, what are we doing in here? We need to um, invoke this method to the parent component so we can handle the savings in there. Okay. So in that, we have to use this event callback method. We're going to pass in the model of this general department. So let's add it here. And it is passing returning this general department. So anytime that we retrieve this data or this method, we're going to come in with this general department as a model so we can retrieve what we have in there. Okay. Since we are going to be using this component for adding and now for updates, we want to also set the default title in here as add. When the page runs first, definitely the user is going to add. But if the user clicks on, on the, when this page is re-rendered again a second time, whereby the ID of the model coming in, that the general department is greater than zero, it means that you want to now update. So you're going to change the value for this title. Okay. But for now, let's see. So we can use else here. If everything is working, if you that pass on the correct thing, else we want to invoke this method, then we can pass in this. So invoke this method and I'm passing general department. So this general department is this one. Let me be specific so you don't get yourself confused. So we have this general department here. We want to um, invoke this method and I'm passing this one. So it is saying it is not a valid giving contest in department. Let me make this as maybe small g. And let's see. It is still saying the same thing. Okay, so if department name, so join department. Let me just change this here. Join department name. So let's grab this and let's go to the method in here from the department name. Let's paste this, change the name in here. And now this is a model. So we have to also specify the model in here. Okay. So you can see this is solved now. And that's what we have. So we're going to invoke this. So this means that as soon as we open this dialog box, it's going to pop this up and we can now start adding some data in it. Let's go to the department pane. Let's try to handle this very well. But before we go in there, I think we have one thing left that we can do from the department uh, dialog. From here, once we're saving, we can have this open dialog. You see, we have this open dialog. And aside from that, we must have a method to also change the title. So we can be using this reference uh, method to change the title call uh, method in the chart component. We pass in the title and that's going to be assigned to this title. And that's not the value of these changes. We have to specify the title in here too, so that the title can also change. So instead of saying, making a static type like our title, we want to say, um, this title department. So it's going to be, you're going to switch between add or update. Okay. And I'm going to make it work. Okay. Let's save this. Let's close all this because uh, we don't need them. Okay. So let's save those one that you haven't saved. Then let's go to the department um, page. So from this page, you can see we have this inheriting from the disposable. And now in the second, if show department um, is true, then it's going to show this. Okay. We have our button and this, this is going to be the add, as you can see from our department. So from that, we have this. Um, this is a card header and this is uh, the body, the body system. There's a card. You can see this is a, it's a container. Which are the card header, general department. And now from the card body, you can see we have this table. So this is a table that we have, and we are going to specify the data in here. For now, this is just a static one that we copied from Bootstrap. We're going to make some changes in here. But before this, we have to include this. This is a general department that we have in here. Let's specify the ref attribute. 
So we have the ref attribute in the general department dialog. That's fine. Aside from that, we need to specify the, the save method that we created. So we can also have it in this way. Handle saved, save method. And also we need to provide the department itself. So department, and it's going to be um, general department, right? So this general department is better that we make it in an uppercase. I think so. So let's see, check things up here from this must be a general department. And with this capital G is very important to make it this state. Now let's um, make some slight changes here. Fine. We go back and now in here. It is not so in here we need to specify the same object as general department then okay so that's what we have now now let's create this so first of all we have to set a title because you know title is going to be changed often so we have to set this title in here so we can keep changing this default is also add so add the already one is add it's going to override that and no problem it's fine so here this is going to be um, action. Remember that we made changes to this. And here is an all state instead of department state. We have to do same. So let's copy this. Okay, so initialize. Okay, so action. That is when the page is disposing. We want to quickly um, unsubscribe or, or revert the process before it dies up. So we have this and we have to create a department for this. Okay, so we must have a general department first. So in that we need to create and now initialize it. We have it here. And I don't want to say department must be called this general department. Okay, so it never confuse us. And we have the title so it's specified beautifully. Aside from that, we need to get a list of department because as soon as I add data, I want to get a list so I can see a live event has a real time. I need to get it as soon as I add, isn't it? Okay, so this means we have to call a method known as await get general department, and we do that before we initialize the whole component. Or um, is it initialized? Re render. It's because you are going to subscribe. So anytime the changes happen, we're going to re render this by then. Get department uh, might have finished getting another department so we can show aside from that in here we're going to have this this is a simple method as return get department in here and now check this is the first time of us using the constant class that we created beautifully let's see how i did that or how you and i we're going to do that because it is very simple this is a list a way general department here dot get or passing the the url general department based url so if i peep this one you know then department here it is what api slash the department it goes to the interface passing this url and I, this also uses as a post as JSync or get async right to the api to this specific route and i get the data and i'll give it to us this is a very simple thing that we are doing here isn't it so get department and there's a method but the question is why is it still having red line how wait operator and this must be an async tag i believe you know that async so initialize async i know this have to have an async in here fantastic okay so now we have this we have this add button here that we need to so this is a handle save operation event in case i'm gonna do that what should i do i can just create a simple method to handle that but it's better that i copy this let me just remove this because you're going to handle with add or update together yes let's do that we don't want to waste time much time in this so here we are saying that let me put this to the next line update so you can see everything yourself fully fully <laughs> okay so what here this is what we are doing now there's a method that is coming from the endpoint from this endpoint okay from this chart component save it is come in with what let's see general department as a model so here as soon as it returns, this is what we are doing in here for that. Gen department.id is greater than zero. So where are we getting this ID? We have to get it from this because you know this is just a save. Okay. This is coming with a general response. So when we create this method, we have to retrieve that. Isn't it? 
let's see so we have to pass in this general department and we say this general department okay so with this general department we have to check we have this in here then this is the boolean is set to force and we check if this department has an id so let me make it like this or should it be like this let's make it like this okay so we have to check if the id here it is greater than zero it means that you want to update this then you want to call the general department dot update this is a service dot update we pass in the model that is going in as a general department then we pass in the base url this is a success in here defaultly it is false by this we call this method as display message we pass in the flag in here from the response from this result and i read this message because you know this is coming from the general response these two guys here from general response now this message is going to display an information to the user now we store it here so it's going to return at the end let's see what it's going to do to return from this we need to create a simple method known as what display message let's put it down here so display message is going to take in a flag and now a message it's going to return a boolean expression so if it is true we want to change the title to success operation display from the dialog service and alerts passing a message and i return through very simple one in case it is false meaning something went wrong you want to say alert the message in here and i return false so if this is false you want to skip it because if it is false we want the user to modify the changes that or the the, uh, the data that he or she has added we don't want to kill the container but in case it is true meaning everything is working we want to set the general department to null okay and you know since we are passing you can see this general department we pass in here as a model to this so if this is not definitely going to also clear the container in there from this add um general department dialog component so let's see then we also call await get general department it's also going to get us all the list of the general department since we've added a new one then this get general department know what it's going to do isn't it check here it is getting from the api passing in the, the base url and now boom that is it aside from that i want to change the title to add so if i click on so this means that when we get to the editing section we're going to change this so as soon as we click on save and it's finished saving defaultly change the default state that's going to be the add okay so this is going to handle um our save it's going to take in this parameter as a model coming from this event callback method from a chat component that we have um initiated or initialized in here okay so this is now working now let's have to work on the or let's work on the edit two. then we run the application and then see what we can do um to make this work so from this edit we have to create a method known as edit and i definitely you know that this edit is going to come in with the same model so that's a general department and i say dp and now we have to change the title here update as soon as uh, i mean you're getting the idea isn't it so there's an update as soon as i click on edit the form must change to update department then we specify this general department to the object coming in here and aside from that we open this dialog now as soon as you assign the output the value of this to this object that's the general department in here this department let's see so i have to change all this um don't want to use this 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 and that the general department this my department and yeah so here okay so for this we're going to clear the container itself and now um, that is it all right so in here you can see the general department it is an instance of this dependent that we created and that's what we are assigned to this as a parameter okay so anytime as soon as we pass value to this definitely it's going to also supply the same value to the chart and it's going to work in there so we from the edit we assign the value of this to the department then we open the dialog where it's going to display the content that we have in here okay so once you have this let's run this application and see what we have now so save this now let's run this app but before that we have to make sure our server is active so if i click on the server 
then the bag and start without the bargain. Let's start it first, then we start the client. Okay, so it is ready now. As you can see, let me minimize this and let's start the client. That's what which the client is what we want, not the server as well, because server, we know it is working. Let's see. Oh, as you can see, we have an error here. Let's check it out. So the name that service does not exist. Yes, I know because it is D like this. And uh, which one again? This one too. It is D like this. Which one? That's all. Okay, so it is now loading. And this is what we have. So if I click on department, I have the general department for now. Brand department. We have only for the department. Now if I click on this, I think this must shown here, but it is not. Because of maybe we have not included that. Let's check it out from the home page. We go to the home page. And in here we have these tabs. Okay. So we haven't included these pages. So let's include them here. So we can grab this. Cut this. Save this. Go to the import and I'll keep it there. So the next time I want to use it globally. There won't be any issue anymore. So in here, we can let's paste this here. Save that. Go to the home page and you can see the soft. Refresh this. Now we are good to go. Okay. Now let's click on department, general department. Okay, so I have it here. Now, oh, it's all right. So we have, we are not using, using this here. But if I click on this add department, you can see passing the name of department. So let's say this an IT department. Click on save. And now this is going to wait to see process completed. So click on OK. And now it has cleared this. We can now close this. We can also add another one. Let's add the same IT and C. So same IT department. Click on save and it tells you process completed. Well, really? We are not checking. So let's say IT again. Click on this. Okay. So it seems there's an, there's an issue here because we don't want to save this more times. Let's have a look from the dialog component. Okay. So in here, that's where we have the save. The ID here, so we add a new one, isn't it? So we add this from the insert, we pass in the department, and now we get it. Well, let's go to the repository, or let's first run the interface, not the API. Now let's see from this general department. So get all. Let's see what we have from the API. Okay, so we have all this. We see it, 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 it. No. It's not the best, so you want to add. So we add in the department, and all you need to do here is you need to clear all this. Okay, okay, so try this out. What we need is only the name, <laughs> not too much. We need only the name. So there's an IT again. <laughs> Let's see. I can just copy this, click on execute, and for the computer. Okay, so the issue is coming from the endpoint here. Okay. Let's have a look with the endpoint. Let's go to the process repository. Oh, the process dollar component or the general department repository. And this happening in the server um, repositories and under implementation from this general department repository. In here, we get or we get by ID, we insert it, right? And that's where the problem is coming from. So let's check it out. We first check the name. So here, normally, what I do here is let's catch it. So let's have check if now. So check if now is equal to. Then we can now call this name await. So check name. Then pass in this item dot name. Not this item, okay, that's the item dot name. Now this is going to check. So here we can say that. 
Okay, so check this. If now, now when you count down here, with return item is null, it's going to be true. But unless you can do this, if now return true, else, then return false. Okay, so that's the same way. But here, for us to get a better understanding, maybe you can do it like this. This time operator, you actually get it, isn't it? So a second from this, not department, this must be a general department I uh, have you seen. Good, so now we can return back to the normal state. Fix format 10. Okay, simplify this. We can make this very simple. Return item is now from this general department. We're going to check if the name is not equal to that. And in that, we can now return. So here, we can just go ahead. We can just grab this, put it here. We can do it like this. Anyone that you feel you want to do it, by the time, try to cache it before you check. So that it makes checking very easy, debugging very easy, or easier for you than putting this whole method in here. Okay. So, I won't say department. This must be a general department, isn't it? I believe you've done this already, isn't it? Good. Okay, okay, okay. So, this is now working. And we let's close this up. We are going to run the server again. Then run the, the client. Okay, so this is working. The server is ready. Now let's terminate this and let's run the client. Not terminate. Hide it. Okay, so department, um, general, and I'll click on add. Let's add same IT. Click on save. Okay, process completed the same thing. So provide name. IT. The same thing. Oh, we have to check this one again. So in here, let's see what we're doing, 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 doing. We check from the department. If null. Return. Okay. So if this is false, that's the right thing. Definitely this is not, I mean it is not found. But in case it is found, it's going to be false, right? They return this. I got it. So we have to refresh this up. All right. So this is now ready. Click on general departments uh, here and I'll add departments. Uh, so with this, we're passing an IT. Let's see IT with this. And tells you department already added, right? So this already added. Maybe you can specify this IT. Then tell the user that's already been added or something like that. You can also, you can customize it the way that you want. Okay. I leave that one up to you. But this is what I'm going to do. That's okay. Now let's display them in here from the UI. So in, in that we go to the department page. And now where we have this, we're going to clear from the table body because it is a table. We have table head. Then we have the body, so T body. We're going to clear this, the content here. And also from the, the TR with this, we're also going to clear the header. And now let's specify our own custom header for this. And that's what we're going to use to display um, this to the user. Bear in mind that we have installed bootstrap icons already. And that is what we are, or we have been using in this project. So with this, this is a header. I'm going to pass in this header as an ID. ID is of this is a number ID and now the general department and our action so that you can add or you can edit it. In this, the T body, I'm going to have something beautifully simple as this as well. So from the T body, that is this one. In here, I have, can't you see this? Is this okay? Okay. So we have just a scope and you can see this is just a get a loop into this general department list. And we're checking if it is not now that's so we want to run this. We have a count here to get it, count the number of items that we have. Count and I'll count plus plus. I believe that's for this. <laughs> you know, isn't it? Then we have delete async or delete click and also edit click. So if I click on delete, if I click on edit, I want to pass in the whole object and I'll try to edit it. In case this is now, we want to return no department um, added yet. We have this edit already created. Now what is delete? For now, we can comment this and I'll work on this later on. So control K C comment they save that and let's run this and see. Now there you go, it is ready. Click on department general and I can see we have the whole list department in here. Because as you can see, from one up to eighteen. Isn't it? Check it out. Eighteen. 
from 1 up to 18. And if I click on this, see what happens. Uh, There's an IT. If I click on this, it has a pop up IT. And now let's say um, if I want to change this to maybe um, 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 customer customer service, click on save. And now let's see project completed. Save it. And now that is it. Check it up. So the edit is done, isn't it? To the next one, edit this. Um, let's say uh, customer support. Save this. Save success. You see this add. You see add department. Check this one. Edit this. And you see just update department, right? So let's say this is cleaning. Or oh, don't you have cleaning in your department? <laughs> you have, isn't it? Okay, so you see now it's working. Let's refresh and see. Maybe anyway, it is not getting to the database. Let's refresh and see if it is getting to the database. Now, when you have this done correctly, we're going to copy and paste this to to create all the data. So, as for that, I'm going to leave it to you. I'm going to run a fast as horse or rabbit or snail. <laughs> rabbit, right? So, you can uh, finish this on time. Now, you see it's still there, right? So, you see we have this. These are the IDs. These are the numbers. And now, what we can see from here. But maybe this is what you want to do. You want to... Um, when it's too long, we want to just have a system to scroll this up from the header. You want to scroll this. You don't want to be having it down there. Okay. And as, as, after that, we have to work on the delete icon too. And change the indicators here. This must be a pointer, right? But you see this, it must be a hand. But it's a pointer. We can change that. And this one too, we're going to change that in there. Okay. So let's go in there and let's start working on this. So to have this done we're going to have the card header we're going to set this max height or max yeah max height this is a card header set this max height as a you can create as a, a style that you can apply but i like using this inline one so you set the height to 580 pixels overflow on x you want to hide it by on y you want to scroll a <laughs> very simple one now let's have a look with the delete if i click on delete this is what i want to do i'm upsetting uh, passing the method with what the current item object and item object and that is talking about the general department model now in here let's handle the, the the delete method in here down here you know this edit right so this is edit and now on top here i'm going to say this is um add or update so two in one this edit and now this is delete so crowd is done this here is going to be delete now for the deletion what can we do or what are we doing do you have any idea on implementing the delete it's yeah, very simple you want to actually confirm do you want to, are you sure you want to do this first before we do that so in here it has to accept a method in here and now this method is coming with the general department as you can see from here then we using the dark server that confirm async are you sure you want to delete you pass in the name confirm delete it's a title then if it is false return but in case it is true we want to call the response the server service general department service or delayed by id passing the id itself and i here passing the base url and check we have this method already to display the message right so you can see we are using what is this classes oops object oriented programming is not that we have these classes whereby you can call these classes put their common ones here they can be calling it as well remember also one of the design principles dry do not repeat yourself so we try as much as possible to do that at times we may repeat but not all time <laughs> okay trust me but maybe there are some better ways to do that you can also search on that and implement it okay now let's see so we have this method done and aside from that as soon as you delete you want to call get employees oh employees get general department because one has been removed and you want to remove it from the list okay this is all that we need to do now when you check this interface we are using these icons check check it out from the bootstrap it is an icon of what bi pencil bootstrap icon of what pencil bootstrap icon of trash and that is going to be give us the, 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 the trash can and the pencil to delete all right so let's refresh this and let's see when we have this done we're going to make a copy of this simple and try to edit it very quick from this department you're going to clear the general and i'll leave all the departments and we're going to duplicate itself right now work on it very fast and quick so let's see it is now ready i expand and guess what let's wait for this to get run department uh, general and i can see we have this if i click on this see what's going to happen are you sure you want to do this you want to delete cleaning no it sticks 
IT, I just want to do this. Yes, it's removed. Check it out. Okay, it's too many, so you can't see, isn't it? Now let's see. Now before we do that, check out. You can see that here, the header doesn't go. See, you can see the header is stuck, isn't it? Then scroll time, fantabulous. Working well. So let's delete this one. IT, are you there? It is not, isn't it? Check here, the 16. Let's do this one and see the rest. 15 now. You see this working, right? 14. So I'll leave it up to you, delete the rest, and now let's move on. I believe we did not delete all the ITs. Uh, you leave one there because also departments. Okay, so now we have this. We have to go in for this general department, right? So how do we work on that? When you close this up, and uh, when you check in here, you can see we are adding this ID, Kesar style. And that is what we need to do. Let's specify this Kesar style down here. Okay. So changing Kesa the from normal pointer from normal Kesa to pointer. Okay. So that is it. So this completed. Now the next thing to do here is we have to work on this department. Now this is general. So for department two, let's close all this. So we're gonna use the same idea. All right. So here I'm gonna run like a rabbit. So I told you earlier on. If want me to slow down, then for the video, light, light, you know, <laughs> so I can slow down if <laughs> I'm running. Okay, so um, when it come to, let me open this. I don't want to open this libman. Close it up. It's a mistake. You go to the solution. Now, from the same pages, we have this department. So we're going to add another department. So department is going to be, this is general one. You're going to add department itself. Okay. So let's create this inside the department. Um, we add a new razor component. Then we say department dialog. Inside this dialog, you want to so have it is the same thing that we are doing. So I suggest the, if you actually understand the first one, general department, then you're good to go. We have a, an object here, we have a list. It is an event callback and passing in this general department. And this is, we are getting a list of general department. Because here, it's going to be a cascaded drop down. This department has to have an ID, general department ID before you can save it. So we have to include the general department in here. All right, so we have this visible. You know this already title. You know this already from the previous one. Uh, so no need for me to explain it. Let me explain the important ones to you, and that is it. You know this already, you know this already. We invoke it, department, in here. Open dialog, you know, change title, you know. And now here, that is com this comes in using the same fusion drop down. So we want to change this on value change. We pass in the general department, and now here we want to specify the ID to this. This is going to be the string defaultly. So converting to integer using n dot pass to uh, pass it to integer. We have to create this drop down to have this change event X which pass in a string and now with the object as general department. And that is basing on the general department list that you have in here. And this is going to be a supply type. Okay, as you can see, there's a parameter here. So you need to supply it from the parent component. Okay, so once you have this, let's have the design. It's a very simple one. We are using a dialog component. Is it dialog? Yes, yeah, that's a dialog, SF dialog component. I have to grab this so I can explain it up to you. So let me paste it on top here. Oh, very simple. So control period, let's include it first. Oh, we have not installed the component, have we? No, we haven't. SF dialog box, we have SF drop down list. This is the same thing as we copied from the first um, general department. So I need not to explain this dialog. You know what is going already? But what I'm focusing here is we have the same title is this. When you get to this edit form, we have department as a model. On submit as saved. And now from the department add the department name, we have select general department. That is a that is a problem. Is it a problem? That is a task. So we check if department the general department it is not now. We want to display this. But in case it is now, meaning that it is the first time of us adding data. So this is add, this is update you know update department is going to have a source of data right to eight um, values respectively but with the addition there's no data from this it's going to be a now to contain the current selected item 
So we display the serial switching from based on the department, general department. Okay. Now, in order for us to have this, we have to retrieve this general department and we're going to do that. So here, we have to in install this first. Except dialog box that pop up, I think so. So let's save this. Let's install this component. So right click on this client. You go to dependencies and stop this first. Manage NuGet packages. So in here, we're going to type in simfusion.blazer.dialog. So we're going to have this. This is a dialog. Now let's see with a drop down. This drop down is going to come from. Okay, so you have this drop down. And now let's click on this. No, you don't want to install this version. You can actually install the update one, but I have a specific version that I do use. I want to go in for that specific version. So install this. Maybe we need to also install button as well. So same reason, blazer buttons. Let's also okay. So we have it already installed. That's all that we need for now. We need any package again. We come back and install. So don't worry. Now in here, control period, we can include the namespace here. But since we're going to be using it for the whole application, let's cut this. You know where you're supposed to paste it, right? So do that quickly. Let's see who finishes first. So import that razor. And then here, let's paste this. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> we go back to the dialog. And now in here, we have this soft. And when you check this, it is just we have a selected item. If this is not now, we want to retrieve the department name. Okay, from the department, we want to retrieve the general department name from the department. And we pass in the general department as a T item. The same thing for the T item in here. And now this is a field. So you want to get the ID as the, the field. You know how we use this option. Select option. Option has a value and it has a name, right? So the value is this one. This is going to be bound to the object. And this is going to be displayed to the user. So we have this. Can I, can I, can I close this? Okay. Then we have the data source as this. So you see the data source is the same. So that here, if it is not now, you want to pass instead of saying select, you want to pass in the name. What has been selected already? If it's a new one, then select general department. This on value change and value change can also handle the same thing. The same method is going to handle that. And that's what that we are doing. We have this dialog button down here and it's saying submit. You know this already, so let's skip that. So you see, it's the change here, it is only this. And that's what I've taken you through. Okay, that's fine. So let's save this. And now it is the same. We have, it's going to invoke. Let's go into the same dialog and now let's create the component for this. And this is going to be the dialog component or department page. You know, we have the dialog already, so we need to create the page itself. So from here, we have department, we have the department dialog. And now here, add a new component. And this is going to be department page. All right, so the same thing as we've done. Um, so the same thing, and I believe I said the same thing, trust me, it is the same. So from this, I can just grab all this from here. Okay, so here we have the same style as you know this. We call this department dialog, and you know it have the same reference, the same save option, the same department here the same general department. So you're going to supply general department to the dialog. If you check this, it is accepting a general department as a, as a parameter, which is a list. So we need to supply it. We have three, one, two, three, right? So we need to supply the same type, one, two, three. This is a reference. This is going to make us have access to this method down here, change title. Since the public type, you can have access to it using this at ref, reference. <laughs> Okay, so we have this uh, title set. We have the object created, department initialized. Uh, we have the list created here, the same department to display. On initialize, we call these two methods get department and I get the general department list. Subscribe to hide and show. 
we have get department to get the department here we have get general department to get all general department maybe you'll be saying ah why can't you put all in one yes you can but the reason is here it is used for add or update this is going to be used for no this is used for add or update this is used for display at times you don't want to add you want to display you want to just you don't want to add you want to update you want to just display if you want to call this again then you have to call this again all right but since we are calling them the same type in the initialize so we can just put the same here then maybe you can say load default but for specific sake for you to get a better understanding what it does that is the reason why i did this you can modify the way to suit how you want it okay then we have this add button click you want to change the title display the dialog and now there's an open dialog called this method to display now i click on save you can see the same thing right so i need not to explain this just that here we need a department service not general department service update passing the object department and now with this it is coming in with this department since we're invoking and we say department copy this in here we can now paste paste <laughs> okay and that is all so in here we're going to say this department equal to null and now set change the title if i click on edit this department that we have we have created initializing from the se section this section section <laughs> okay so um assign it to the department as an incoming payload and now open the dialog box change the title to delay update and that is all to delete do same confirm and now call the department service passing the department based url and now department id display the response get the whole department again and this is a section this you know it already dispose it when dying up all right so that is the same thing now what we need to do here is have to display this so first of all we go to the home page so home page can be found in the pages you can see that's the end here um home page home page that is this one right so there's an other we have department there's a home page now this is the home page you have tab table oh table table banner we have the department so guess what we have also this department let's save this this is going to show on the screen but how can we hide and show when you check the department um, page we must have our ui so this is a code section now on our ui we need to use a method that we created in the state container so we can hide and show this anytime that we want so in that it is the same thing that we have done so the explanation won't be too much here you see we are using show department so it is a state from the all state okay so the same thing add button i can just move to the next line so you can see it well you can see the same thing isn't it check it out here we add the general department then we look to the department and i will check if this is not now we have a count to initialize as a counter we get a department here item the department dot name so here we, make, we are calling from the link you know when creating a relationship we say list of departments is going to have um list of department we made a reference in the de general department so one to many and a many to one so one depart general department is going to have a list of departments that is one to many when you go to the department it's going to have um a list of departments going to have one general department that is a many to one we did that earlier on and that's exactly what we're doing here so we have this edit at on click we have this and um, edit and i delete the same thing that we are doing in here and the department selected for default one but when we run this we might have an error the reason is that we have not included this so definitely when you try to go to edit there will be an error we don't want to see that first so let's run oh, no, no no let's edit it first okay so let's go to the server not the server itself the server library that's from data access and now in the data access go to the general department not that the department repository so in here when you go to this get all you can see we have this i would like to you can put this in a in a in a, in a dot form okay so we have this we have this and that but in here we must have as no tracking so let's use as no tracking then dot we have dot include general department maybe you're asking yourself why am i using as no tracking if you check the community i have posted um this the programming tips from this jara now it says that this has no tracking actually tracks it you know when you get data from from the database using this the contest it keeps 
tracking the data so that anytime that you want to make an update it makes it possible here you, we are just reading the data only so to in include or to improve performance we have to set as nose tracking to hot it so anytime that i start to track it say no don't track this let the system let the memory be free so no tracking no cache data stored nothing else then we can now move on okay so this is gonna is there to improve performance but you can decide to also skip it okay it doesn't matter but when you have in a large scale application this small small things actually improve the performance here yeah, for data retriever and query and a whole lot all right so we are including general department and now this is going to make it work so save this and you know what let's run the server again so save everything make sure the server is closed and also the instances created is also closed. You know this one. Make sure you close it up. Then right click on the server. Let's debug this. And now start. But before we start, I think I remember one thing. We are going to see the display because default is going to set you off unless we click on the button. So to do that, let's handle this first. Let's go to the nav menu. The nav menu can be found from the solution explorer. You go to the client service or the client section and in the client you can see we have the pages layout and there's nav menu so you want to handle this in here so you don't want to inject this state let's close this authorization we can cut this then let's remove all this from the top here we go to the import authorization is here already so with this we need okay this already so we can remove this one notification save the state also um, stated already so from here this is what we're doing let's see we did this in the last video so you know this must be um when this is clicked so this is going to be an all state so dot uh, general, general department clicked that is if i click on general department now where from the general department it is this one so this is general all right so if I say general DEP, that's going to be general department. So that's what you're going to make some change in here. And also we need to, uh, let's finish all this quick before you move on to the next one. Once you have the general department, you're also going to have department in here. Now that department, let's also bind it to the department click. So maybe department click also has to work from here. And that's a department click. So this is for department. Aside from that, you can also have branch. So branch clicked. There's a branch, as you can see. So branch clicked. Let's have this method so we can wire it up. And in that, we let's have this line. As a line separator to separate it up. Then let's go to the next one. That's going to be country. So we're going to add one more for country. Aside from that, you're also going to add one more for city. Then you're also going to add one more for um town so this is going to be the city now city clicked and then the last one here we're going to have is let's see this is going to be the town okay so town clicked you know you know we are using the bootstrap icons so when you check the icons then uh, use a one that suits what you're doing aside from that let's also have this line separator to separate this then we have the department. So at the end, we are going to use authorize you to hide this, some of them from the users, normal users, unless administrator, then we show everything. Okay, so that's what we have. Now let's have a Keza style so we can change the, the Keza to pointer. And we can put that down here. Okay, so aside from that, we need to have the department or department stated down. So we know we have the department stated down here already. So this I'm going to do. I'm going to use this lambda expression for department. We have, um, let's say we have general. Then this is going to be department. And we have branch. The next one, you're going to have city, country, city, and our town. So you can see that we are using the state container here, right? 
then let's have the user and now the employee so if i click on user display user click on employee display employee so when it's checked down here let's have a look with the user so here we have this counter you can remove this counter and now the, the home is there so counter shouldn't be here we don't need it then you can see we have administration and now this administration maybe we can manage it a little bit so this is going to be um manage user something like that okay so manage users click on that you're going to have this drop down as users then let's have this click attached to this to the user so we have this user and this is going to be click attached to okay so this is that you want to um, have it and now instead of saying um, department maybe this this must be available for only admin right so here we can make it the same administration then here let's say management so with this some of them will be available to users that the, the admin assigned to work with it or to work with them we can have management and in the, inside the management you have this general department you have a department you have branch and all stuff okay so this now sets and that is it what we want to do here we can save this and now let's run this up let's see if the server is already on no it is not we have to run the server again So the server is ready. First of all, let's have a look. So click on department and I'll get all. We want to include all general departments. But like you see here, we have the cyclic um, event or detected. Let's go to the source, go to solution explorer, then go to the base library from the entities. Click on, let's see, from the base entity, no link here from the branch. You see we have this link so we have to include this json ignore okay so let's grab this because we're going to be using it all over copy this let's go to the city too it has a list of towns so let's include that go to the next one countries does it have a list of cities so let's also include this let's go to departments it has a list of branches so let's include this we're doing this for all so we don't get any problem we go to doctors it doesn't have employees it doesn't have list from here the department has it a list of departments so let's include go to okay this one doesn't you go to what time it doesn't okay so here base Refresh token and sanctions. It doesn't have this sanction type pass a list in here, so we need to um, include. You go to towns. It has a list of employees, so we have to include. Then, user roles doesn't, vacation doesn't, and vacation type does. So we have to include this here. So if you actually check all this, you can see that we have all this JSON ignore should be specified on the list type. So we can skip this cyclic um, error, which goes like a runabout. <laughs> okay, it loops to get 34. So let's include system.test.json. We have to add that. Let's check the other sanction um, overtime type has it up. So this overtime type it has only ID and our name. We did not then overtime. So here I want to check this. Even the there must be, you know, from sanction type we have this one to many. We have to include the same. Because when you go to overtime type. It is inherited from this base entity. If I pick definition, it has ID and name. 
And now since there's a relationship, we have to also establish it in here. So as a list so from over time, list of over times. I think that's this how it's supposed to be. We have to run migration when you're working on that. Then we have the set to so over time type, then over time ID. Okay. We go to the department. We have it. Then we go to department. This is a doctor's. We have the department. So we have to include this too from this general department. Then country has a list. Let's include. Then city also has it. Branch also has it. Okay. So doing this, it is not going to work. Let's run the server again. All right, so let's check it up from the department. That's where we have the relationship created or established. So I'll click on execute. And I can see we have the general department in here and we have the department. So we have only one department for now. And that is the department, and you can see it has the general department ID of two. And that is an ID. So this is the general department. The name is general department name, and you can see there's an ID of two here. Okay. So we have it to work. Now let's run this client to and see what we're gonna have. So the app is ready. Now let's go to departments and we have you see we have all this. So this is general department that general department is too long, so you have to make some change. I can make it as only general, okay? General will be okay. Or I either I have to expand this, but I'm not gonna expand that. Or I can move it a little bit here, okay? So maybe uh, many of them so it's still gonna work. When you check the solution from this, we have to we can do that. Check from the nav menu. And if I actually check it well, you can see from here it is having 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 from this management and from this drop down it is having a left of five margin left of five isn't it and each is having a thing there's a list right so there's a div that displays the general department so maybe you can make it as three you save this Refresh this again. Check it up. So you can see now we have it. Yes. So it is working. Yeah. And that's it. You can see you have the user too. Okay. So if I click on general deep, mm -hmm, general deep, right? <laughs> we have the department, we have the ID, we have the general department name. And I click on the branch. You can see we have it. This is a branch, general department name. So click on this. So you can see it is having a branch of ID of what? Two. So check it out. We have it right and this is the pattern that we created if i click on edit this let's see a pop-up and you can see we have the edit the name select department so let's say the department is under is under is under let's say server handling well i don't know <laughs> i'm just passing something server handling is a department in what do you think we've been an it so choose an it and i'm going to change from this click on save and now yes updated process completed fantastic check it out Server handling department is coming from this department one. But this still remains. Okay, so that's a problem. We need to have a look on this. Let's go to the code. We have to navigate to the department repository. So in here, when we make the update, instead of updating the whole item um, and in there, this is what we're going to do. You know, when it gets to the database and I'll find out that the ID of this item, it is not found. It's going to turn it as a new item, which is going to be saved, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so you want to make sure app that's what we expect. So let's um, include, let's use the default one. That is just why we make a search from database by tracking. Then we want to update the uh, department ID in here. I think this is going to solve the whole issue. So let's save this one. Let's find this app. Now let's see. 
So in here, let's first refresh this. Then let's have a look, click on the management de department. And now in here, let's make the edit and see. So let's choose an IT that we wanted to use. Now update this, click on OK, and I can see it has now changed. So meaning that when you use the, the update, the inbuilt one with the relationship, at times it gives you problem and maybe you have to use a manual way of doing it. Okay, so let's add one more or let's delete this too. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I want to do that. So click on OK and now it is off. Let's add another one. So passing the name as um, server handling, as you know, <laughs> it is from this and IT. Then save that and it's going to be saved. We can also add another one and it's going to be maybe, 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 maybe. Well, um, this is going to be the home cleaning. And there's going to be part of the cleaning section. So cleaning in here, click on save and you can see you're having it in here. Okay. So this is working. Now let's work on the branch and, um, it is, we are done with that. Then we go to this country, city, town, then employees. And we have one in here, user. So these are the things that we are supposed to work on. All right. So we have a lot of work to do. Now let's have it done. Now you can see we've done the same thing. So we're going to make a copy of this and now use it for these branches. Okay, so for this branch, you're going to change the general department to just department and now use the list of um, department instead of using general department in this department component. All right, so let's have a look on this and how we can also implement this. If you know you're tired, you can just you can just pause it for some time, relax, and now let's, let's start. Okay, I'm not tired, so <laughs> we have a lot of work to do, so let's let's move on. Okay. So before we skip here, we, let's see, this is the department repository. So we go to the, let's go to the, go for branch repository in here. And now we have to make this change. So from this get all, we have to include dot, right? So dot include, let's specify as no tracking. So as no tracking, then dot include. Let's include here department to so D max to D dot department. Okay, so let's do this. Or you can just put it line like this. It's still going to work. Dot to list. Okay, so we have this. Now let's check the update. So here we add whilst you update, we say department dot department ID. So this is supposed to be an department, this is supposed to be a branch, right? So let's say this is a branch. So we check branch, branch, and this is going to be branch. And branch of department ID is equal to item.department ID. That's what you must do, or we have to do it. Okay, so let's save this, and I believe the rest is okay. It's the same. Let's go to the component for our class session. And now in the component, we're going to make a copy of this. So now we have department dialog. We're going to create a um, branch dialog as well. So if I click on department, let's add a new razor component. And now this is going to be branch dialog. Now with the branch dialog, you know what it means? You're going to have the same thing, the same code, the same style. So that is where I like copy and paste. Very simple one. You can see we have branch list of department. You know, at first we use general department, but here we have department as an event callback in here. And we had the visible done already. And if it is saved, done already, right? Invoke it. And now, so select branch, not department. Oh, okay. So the same department name, then dialog open the same. Invoke it in here, pass in the object, then title, change title. And you're going to have this. So branch ID dot department ID is equal to pass the department in here and I convert the value to integer and as you know you can see it's the same isn't it let's have the UI so that's why I'm just running like a rabbit I told you earlier on I'm gonna run okay so let's see we have this done and for the this the UI we are using the same SF dialog components now, if you check here, it is the same thing that we are having, the same title department, and this is going to be a branch, right? So, 
title add department not this is gonna be branch so it must be add branch or update branch so branch branch id branch name we'll open to branch if it is not now get a department name from this then in here display this and you know the same thing button and now when you come down here we have it it's very simple one and it's the same okay so no need to explain again because i've explained this more than twice this is the third time now let's have a look on the next one and that's going to be the branch page we have to create this component so within that branch page we have to we need to do same as we've done so from our code section what we did to the branch page the same thing you're going to have access to the title um, branch dialog as a reference you're going to have the branch as a container as an object you have a container department and there's a department of what there's a container of branches so this is going to display to the user and it's going to display anytime the user want to add branch we have get branch get department and you know get branch get department as you see we pass in the department based url branch based url from the constant class which is static we have our add button you know it is showing change the title open dialog is calling this in the add button clicked we have save if it is greater than zero it means we want to update call it passing the branch based url else you're going to add it so here is an update this is add insert passing the base url and now if it is success click the container change the title to add and edit container edit click change the title open branch set this branch here but you know from this handle save option this must be branch then we say this branch so with this branch copy this branch then if the branch id here it is one <laughs> no it is one it is greater than zero then you pass in this branch else pass in this branch set the branch new and you're going to automatically write override that okay edit set the branch to this one and now open the dialog you're going to fill it up oh that's simple so this is what that we need to do now let's save this too we need to create the ui and the ui too in the same thing that we are doing so we have to you can just grab from the ui in there and we can paste it here very simple and a quick way okay so we have to also implement this interface i disposable sense we are using it you can see we include a branch dialog and you get a reference a save branch model department list we have it there's a keza stars you know we've done it already you and i there's a button as you know it's the same thing that you know we have this height and over overflow scroll and etc we have the column header these are the, the buttons to edit and delete and then you see we have that is it's the same no need to talk much here okay let's run this oh so it is ready now i hit this small one let me open this now branch management department we're going to branch we have this open in here oh uh, do you know the reason why we're not having this tell me oh yes i believe you know it but you can't talk when you check this page we go to the home page and we did not include this so go to the home page and check it out we did not include that i believe that's what you're talking about isn't it so branch page that is, that is it so let's run this again now let's have a look on this uh, management branch and we have it in here currently department branch action nothing happens in here add branch let's see so i'm going to add branch here and this branch is going to be uh which branch which branch which branch okay so kumasi branch <laughs> well this is a kumasi branch so here we have several hand like we see we have these are the branches and this, this is a solid branch this is a solid department so this is the department that we have right so which department does this <coughs> branch fall is it home cleaning is it server handling okay so this branch kumasi is from server handling we then save this so saved oh, but because we have an issue here have a look we add it is saying that object reference not set to an instance from this um branch page like like one 
let's check it out branch page line one branch page this line one so our state show branch you have it if branch is null if it is not then this is what you want to do branch name okay did we include the branch branch repository get all branches include department okay okay so we need to just build the application and everything is working all right so we have this branch now we can add one more to this let's see so this is going to be in Accra branch and this is going to be for this department uh, we are in Accra home cleaning the branch of this let's save now let's see completed and i can see we have it over here because so if we have the, the department then we have the branch in here all right let's see if we want to add to you select branch so this is the solid department we have to um, handle that now from the edit to if i want to change this to um, server handling from the branch click on saved now let's see you can see it has also changed now you have the same server handling from the same branch now let's see if we, i can also delete is it possible yes i can also delete it all right so this also working now let's have a look with the next thing is there so we are done with this today we're going to the country city and our town so before we we go to that i want us to make some changes here from this dialog branch dialog instead of saying select branch there's going to be select department right so department and maybe i'm sure when we check the other ones so we must have the same issue so department or dialog and this might be select general department okay so this here and yeah that is it now let's have a look with the next one this is a department that's going to be location so from country city and our town this must also be a cascaded style so the first one is going to be country must be selected first then you're going to have the city and then the town so let's let's stop this application and in here we go to the same content pages now let's create another folder and our name it as location you know i want to organize this now in here let's create the first one let's handle the country first so we have country dialog i click on this and country dialog and now in the dialog we are still going to have the same thing so the same thing for what we've been doing copy and paste is the best so far <laughs> we have countries we have a country in here and we have handle save operation event as for event callback the same thing then we invoke the country in here so please you need to provide country name so now let's then change this okay now let's have the drop down to give us a section for the country that the ui so from this user interface we have this simple one so maybe i can just <laughs> replace it well so we have this you know it's a dialog box is the same we have country as a model on submit is saved we have country id country name the same and there's a button so if i click on it you get this method invoked fine save this let's go let's create this country page where it's going to use this chart component that we have created so you can see in any we create a component we create parent and a chart right and then we are communicating using event callback and also parameter um, communication right click on this let's add a new component in here and country page now in that country page we can have our style and uh, you know the style what we're doing so the same Kazan style maybe we can put this at the css that's the app.css that we can be using it once but well you we can do it that that's why you're a genius you can do it so let's see we have this country dialog and you can see we have a reference to this as country dialog when it's saved and the country um, object we have the same thing in here there's a list of country that we get as soon as we add we get a country from here then you see we are getting the country from this country base url from this constant class static class when this button is clicked change the title and i open it call this method in here now when it is saved we have to return this country because it's a 
event callback and it's coming with a model now this country if it is null or if the id is greater than zero you want it to miss you want to update it passing if not then add it passing the country based url display the response and if it is successful get the list and i'll change it to title if edit is clicked then call this method assign it to this country and now open this dialog it's going to automatically fill up delete is clicked then confirm as a person if false return if in case it is true call the service and now here pass in the country based url display the message get a list again because an edit has been um occurred and you need to refresh it that's what we are doing very simple one now in order to do this first let's go to the home page and let's also add a country page so yeah this is what i'm going to do let me just cut all this control period i need to include this because we're going to have country city and now town so let's cut this we go to the import where is it where are you import where are you oh it's not here so go to solution then from this client we have the import and let's paste it here okay let's go to the country repo and i'll try to um here let's see what we can do so from the country repo it is here do you have country repo we have city okay there's a country repo and let's see from the save delete we have um get all we are not including anything from get by id to this same insert to this same in here and now um, for update we don't need to do same <laughs> we don't need to do same right we are doing same as well okay so that is this one very simple so let's save this and once we've added this to the home page we can now run this and test it out run the client too let me expand this okay so management now you go to country oh we are not having the ui did we actually put in the ui oh there is no ui let's check it out so from the country country department oh the country department country page country dollar country page do you have the ui ui oh we do you not have the ui you see so let's include the ui So the UI tool is very simple. It is the same table that you know we've been doing. Show country from the state uh, container, add button, and uh, the same edit and click because you are looking through this country list, and that is what we are doing. You can see the same delete, and yeah, that's all. So I'm not. I didn't know to explain this. Yes, trust me. And now I think everything is going to work. Let's run this again. now let's see from management you go to countries you have the form do we do we do we do we no we don't no we don't no we don't why i know we have added this country page to the home page in here oh okay so there's a dialogue it's supposed to be the page i know you've done this you knew what <laughs> the writing so you've done it i did not see the dialogues are the chart component. These are the parents, right? Now these parents also become a chart to this home page. So it's a descendant star. So this home page is a descendant to the country and now the country dialogue. Why the country page also is a parent to the country dialogue. And the country dialogue is a chart to country page <laughs> component. That's how it is working. So let's see from the management now country oh we have it now you see these are the country uh, we have ghana here and maybe let me just edit this tell me the name of your country let me add it i know india yes india is one i love that country yes yeah, so um let's see and i love the program is there too now let's see from here what else let me come to africa i love that nigeria is in here and it is close to me <laughs> okay so which one again uh, 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 uh well 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 i know i know by all means i have to type united states right and let's see so these are the countries that we have what else okay so whoa 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 whoa, whoa. i want the, the the short ones kenya is okay for me very simple i know togo this is here what is again ah okay these are simple ones 
So you see, we're able to add these countries. Okay. Now let's see. If I want to delete this, I want to delete. No, I don't want to. I want to delete maybe Togo. So you click on this. You see, hi, it is done. Fantastic. If I want to edit this to maybe India, let's see. I made it. I want to add India. So save that. Completed. And let's see. Close on that. Ah, I have it. Right. But it's not how you spell it. Go back. Save. Hmm. That is it. So there is working. We can do everything. Now let's go to the next one. That is the city. If I click on city, what should happen? Let's have a look. Before that, let's go to the repo, city repository. And now where we have this repo, let's go to the get all here. Await dot city dot two lays dot as no tracking dot include. So you yeah, want to include country. So C mass to country. Now let's go to this insert. We have it done. Update. So this is supposed to be um city. Now with this city, we first check if it is now in case it is not city dot name equal to this item. City dot country ID is equal to item dot country. ID. We map it manually, we save it, and that is all that you want to do here. Okay. So this means we have to close this, we have to terminate it because you have to run it again when we're done. We can also shut this down. Okay. Alright, now let's see the next one is I have to close this too. Yes, it is done. Now let's go to the Oh, let me clear this all this because you're done. Clear all these. Okay, so solution. We go to the client pages, country. Now you have the country page, right? So we're going to also create city. So let's do that. Add a new component to location. The name is going to be city dialog, as you know. Now the city dialog. We need to have this our code section. And it is the same, just that here we need to populate the country and now pass as a parameter to this. You can see a list of country as countries, then country city city. And here is a handle save operation, the same thing, event callback. Then you know you need to provide country name. Yes, of course, you need to do that. Okay. You can't do away with that. Now open, change title, invoke it, get the, the country ID. Invoke it now. Let's quickly have the UI. And now with the UI, you're going to have a drop down section where you're going to display the country so the user can just choose. So you can see I have title changing, title, dynamic title. We have um, city name, city, select city. No, select country. Then country name, if it's not now, display this. This is going to be there for the edit and this for a new adding. And you can see we have this T item as countries, country, the value of ID and our test is name. And aside from that, when you check here, we have it. As soon as I click on any of the country, I want to set the ID to the city ID and city.country ID. That is what it means. Then, you know, this is just a relationship. I believe you know that because this is a country ID which is making as a foreign key to the city and the country. Fantastic. Okay. So we need to create the, the page, the boss page itself. And this page is going to be the city page. So let's quickly do that too. Right click location add a new component city page let's have a code section so it is the same we have this title um have the reference object reference made component reference we have cities here yeah, countries to populate and return as a parameter Initialize get you methods city countries when it is add you know pass in the country based URL and now from city service pass in the city based URL. When this is open dialog, I open the dialog in here. When this is save, it is come in with city. So if city here it is null or if the ID is greater than zero, it means you want to add passing the city in. 
but in case it is not then you want to add pass in the city from the city service pass in the city base url then save and i return you success get us it is click the container and now display title simple one if edit is click then edit this assign it to the city then open dialog delete confirm then get from delete from the api from there the endpoint that we have then after end guess it is in here okay then that is it save this let's go to home page and add city page so home page then add city page do you want us to try this yeah i think so let's see if there's no issue with this so right click on this server let's run this Let's run the client too. So you know we have a city page. It means we did not add. Let's see city page. This is a country. City page. Okay. So we did not include. I always forget this. Wow. <laughs> okay. So from the city page, you have to include the UI so it's very simple way i know you can do that so pause the video and try and see if you can include a ui for the city page okay so city page city page let's set first do you have the dialogue yes we have city page now here okay so this is the same add button then these are the headers these are the, the buttons edit and now delete loop into cities uh, list then setting up counter and that is this one so you see it is the same now let's <laughs> do this again all right now let's click on management cities so we have cities in here now let me edit this because i don't have any city name as string in ghana we have an aqua i hope you've heard of it right this is ghana here okay click on okay and that is add you can see i can also add another one so let's say i want to choose the same ghana we have another name as Kumasi. so save this now we have when you go to nigeria i believe we have lagos is it logos or lagos <laughs> logos lagos so it's coming from nigeria save that so maybe you can also add your country name maybe you want to go to um well which one again the same Nigeria we have, um, Abuja, I think. So it's a city. Or it's a state. Well, call it city. Okay, so um, that is this one, Nigeria. Save that. And you know, from NY, New York. And this coming from maybe United States. And I go to have Nairobi. Nairobi or so, is that so? Nairobi? Maybe this is coming from Kenya. Hmm, okay. And maybe you can have Paris from France. So Paris, it's over here. At least each has one. Okay, so India. Okay, so all of India. Maybe I know what of Mumbai. Oh, that is it. Okay. So save that all right so now we have this in here okay now i can delete any i can also edit it let me add one more and delete it so maybe country city each one it is coming from ghana save this save clear this now delete this is wrong one so right click are you sure yes get it it is off okay so this also working we have the country here we have the city okay so now let's go to the town we must have these towns these cities and I'm going to have a town related to each of the city. So town here, we're going to work on that. Let's see. So we go to the town repository. So town repo. Now from town repo, we go to the two list. And now with the two list, dot towns, dot, dot town, dot, as no tracking, dot include, then this is going to be city 
so dot city dot to list when you go to the update there's gonna be town copy this copy and paste so town dot name now town dot city id is equal to item dot city id save it that's all that we need to do so sorry department not found this is going to be sorry it's town not found and i can say that town already added okay or you can even include the name so maybe if you want to include the name let me show you one thing use this string interpolation then here if you want to say that maybe the name so say item dot name that is a very simple one save that okay so this is working we can now close this although we haven't tested it but it is working trust me if i say it is working trust me it's working i know you know that it's also going to work let's go in then and create our repos so maybe in here before we forget this let's add the town page although we haven't created that okay let's grab this then let's save that we're going to create a town dialog and also the town um component okay so that's going to be the page component we go to solution now from the location let's add the last one and there's a town dialog so town dialog we need our code section then you know the same thing town list of cities we have event callback invoke it in here open dialog and now i'm um, get the city id let's have the ui on top it is the same looks same we have the drop down list for city name if for update and now for add of new entry so select city or select your city in here we're gonna start the city for this you know the it item is city and that is this one okay now let's create our city page and that's going to be the parent page for this no the town page so solution location right click add town page then in order to skip this i want us to first have our ui first let's get our ui before i forget it so this is our ui we have shown show town from the app state then we have add button clicked we have the same header we're looking to the towns displaying it and passing in what edit clicked then we have this town component down here and we have town and the cities we need to provide as a parameters now let's come down here and I'll handle this method so in here we're going to handle it with this we create our instance of this component that we have added a town is over here we create an instance our list container is here for cities the same list container for towns to display the screen then if initializes you want to call these two methods and these are the definitions for them and aside from that you pass in town based url and another city based url for each if button is clicked change title open dialog set time equal to new open dialog open dialog <laughs> open dialog then open the town dialog if it is save it is come in as a parameter of what town so pass in this town we can now go ahead and check if town id here it is greater than zero you want to update it if else then you want to add it as a new response check and then get towns change title edit is click then change the update to the title of an add to update then assign a new one coming from the payload then open dialog again delete confirm first if false return in case it is then passing the town base uri passing the id because this method needs an id of it that at the end of the day if, if true then get town 
then this is a method to display the message okay this is saved and i believe we've, we've added it to the home page yes now let's also try this and see so from our server let's write again and now let's also refresh the client <laughs> got us ready so let's open it management and now town we have it in here so city and now town so town let's let me edit this now in accra we have that why i say in accra it's a town save this aside from that we also have um let me use the ones that i know okay so these are our towns then okay you need to provide city name okay so there's an accra so you have to add it to now maybe in kumase we have uh tafu be okay for kumase mm, so kumase i just select this and yeah that's why i know for lagos or nigeria i don't know the town from this okay uh, well so these towns you can provide uh, a town to this okay so town that can be found in that but let me maintain this too from here let me close that if i add a new one that i want to delete maybe i can also delete it so i just want to do this place and i could see it is off so we have two towns added in here okay and these are the cities so we have four sets now let's have a look with the this administration if the user want to manage it how can we work on that then we come back to the employees so we are completed with this from department up to the country so you, you can just there's an entry point or there's a management point that you can manage it when it gets to employee you have to add all this so you can have it selected from this employee this is going to be the master one so let's have a look first with the user and this can be accessed by only the administrator you can just add user no 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 not add user okay user must get registered we're going to be assigned automatically and the admins role here it is to update the role so if you are just a normal user i can change you to be an administrator and uh, to what i am i can, I can also um, um de administer you okay yes yeah. so let's see how to work on that too so let me just hide this or minimize this one and now let's go in there and i'll create user page so from here content pages let's add a new folder for organization we have to stop this first as we can't rename this now let's check it up so from this home page we need to make it as user pages now these user pages we need to also create the same user dialog and now um the user page so right click on this user page and now let's add a new component this is going to be user dialog now this is a dialog we also going to do same so let me just grab this It's the same procedure the same method now you see when you check here we have this manage user oh i did not create that class right that's what you're going to use to populate data so normally um one of my friends suggested that she use a dto but this is a dto but i did not add a dto to it so maybe later on i don't want to just spoil the whole issue with it okay so I just maintain them maybe in a later project if i want to create etos i'll just have to add the name convention all right i'll be adding it to it but well you can start to do that for clarity's sake and also for readability mm, well it's good right click on dtos and now they're going to add a new class in here and it's going to be the manage user so this class is going to handle all the properties that we need to get the user here so in here we need we need only name email okay we need name email user id and on the row these are all strings so the row will be string so that's what we need in here this is what you want to we want to display to the user okay in case you want to add more then it's up to you to add more properties here now let's go back to the user dialog and now where we have this many user accuracies over there ready we have system rules that's what we you we created when doing the authentication it is about in part two part one part two yes 
So part two, part three, you can check up. You're gonna understand what system row is. But if I peep on the definition for this, it is just a row that starts from table to the database. ID and our name, that's what it needs. Very simple one. Then we have manage user. So you can see here is an event called back that to send the list to or to send a model to the parent. Then we check you need to provide user uh, the provide row name. That is if the admin want to change the row name and decide not to select any. We will not allow the admin to save it. So we can see do the same thing here and a system row we get ID. Okay, so let's have a UI created. So for the UI, you can have the same what you've been doing. We have the same um, dialog, and you can see there's an update. This only update user, so we're not making this as a dynamic title or dynamic header. Manage user is a model that we're passing in, and you know we have manage user name. This is disabled. Email disabled. It is only row that is um, that has been enabled for the user to select. So um, if row is not empty, then we want to add. You want to get it set the selected value to it. Okay, that's what we are doing in here. And I think this is supposed yeah it's gone. That's you display selected. That is for update, and that is for adding a new one. The T item is system row system row for the T item. And at the same thing, the value is a name, and at the test is name. You know, at first, you have the value name as what well, the ID. This time, right now, you're not going to have the ID. You're going to retrieve the row name. We go to the database, we search uh, the list in there, or the columns which have the name that we have specified as a row. We can grab the ID from there and now update it. Okay. You can also make it as an ID in here. Now, when you change this as an ID, unless you pick the ID, go to the database, and now retrieve or a name or a row which has this ID. So we can display in the table because you don't want to display just a row ID. You want to display the row name. The ID is hidden for you, the administrator, or for the developer, but the name is visible for the user or the the normal user. Yes. So if this is clicked to, we want to have this on value selected in here. We get the name, as you can see. Here we are not using end dot pass. We get want to get the name straight because this is a string and want to assign it in here. We have it. We can also change title, but title, I'm not sure this this important now because no title changing it's only added and now even this there's no title needed here okay so open dialog set visible to true and that is it okay for the dialog then we have this so what we're going to do here is let's create our user page and where do you think we need to create the user page Maybe I know you are just suggesting or saying your head that we need to put it inside the user folder, pages folder, and that's correct. Correct for three points, okay? So user page. And now with user page, let's first have our the code section. That is the first thing I like to do most. So from the code section, you can see we are doing the same thing. We create an instance of this. We create a container. It's not a container actually, it is just an instance of this manage model then we get all users from manage users we get a system rows then when the page analyzes get user row get rows in here okay so within this we have this get users and now this manage user dot account service dot get users then get rows equal to we want to also get rows open dialog in here to open dialog and if i click on save i am just returning from this so here we have to once you use this we have to invoke and it is coming in as um let's see tax user page so when you check this handle save operation events if it's coming from this user dialog since we are invoking it up in here we have to retrieve it from the user page so here we pass in the it is as a manage user then we say it's a manage user payload from the chat component so in here we update it okay so here we're just making only an update not addition we are just updating and that's really what we are doing here okay after that we display message and we click the container get all users and now if it is clicked then you can see in here manager is equal to this right so we open a dialog okay so you need not to or maybe you can just set the title update user but title is already set already title is already set already it is set already so you need not to override that 
because it's just an update in case it is deleted you want to delete it then as this are you sure you want to delete or you want to delete the users user if yes then delete this user from the account okay then it means you are invoking the account you're invoking the person's account the person will not have access to the system again unless the person registers a new account okay then it's how on you call it the service maybe later on you can decide to you can put some uh, blacklist on people using their their emails or their staff ids so that they cannot have access to the account it is an advanced it is a scalable so you can scale it to anything any any way that you want okay you can um add more features to this then display message here to use the dialog service and i'll dispose it up but you know we have any delays user these are the endpoint update user get rules get users well from this yes we need to include them so we have to update the interface for the account authentication then we can now go ahead and use them because when you check the import you know we have this in here employee we have account service account service but when you check this account service it doesn't have these interfaces check it out so go to this account service check the account interface it has only create sign up refresh token and get weather forecast okay now with this you want to remove this you don't need weather forecast again so let's clear that so we are going to replace it with these ones so you see we have get a list of managers we have this update user and passing this the payload we have get rows is a list of system rows and we have this delete user and id is a payload okay so we have to create implementation for this now let's go to the interface implementation and can be find implementations folder from this user account service so here we have to implement it down here okay so let's come down here we don't want this anymore so we want to remove that so first one is get users we get all users here from this get from json this thing has a list of manager there's an odd url and then the users we're going to create an endpoint known as users so you can see we are using this odd um, api there's an odd url from this api slash authentication that's what we are using okay now let's see and now this we get the private http client because here is a private type and now you must add the token to the header let's have a look that's an update we also do the same and here for the update it is just a uh, put adjacent async and that's what we are doing update user passing the model coming as a payload then the next one is get rows so for get rows all that i need to do here is to get a system rows and then display it. so get private http client then system rows to the auth slash rows then we can now move on and the last one here it is delete user so for delete user we just have to delete async that is an api route or the http client or delete user passing the delete user and on the id return the response to the user this you can see these are the responses that's return the return type general response and the list of system rules and etc okay so we are done with this but we have to create an interface and implementation repository for the data access layer so we go to the solution and now where we have the server library that's a data access layer we go to the contract which whereby we have our user account we have to include the same interface in here so we can just grab this interface from this session then we go to this user account no that is the user account repo then in here let's paste this here after doing this when you go to the repository we have to implement the interfaces for each so user account repository that's what i'm talking about now come down here so we can just refresh token minimize this okay so in here let's have the implementation of this the first thing that we are doing here is get list of manager okay so manage users now here this is what you're doing you first want to get application users get user rules get system rules this method must be a private method that we can call within the scope of this application or this file okay 
because we don't want to be repeating this method all the time so we create one then we can call this all the time oops object oriented programming okay so you create this as an object that you can be calling in your classes form you can call it a numerous times until we we are tired okay so let's have this method created these are three methods which are going to be private i'm going to put them at the basic here now these methods are what tags get system rows and is app db contest dot system row dot as no tracking dot to list so you want to return and user row and also this application row dot to list dot async okay so that's why we are returning these are the methods that we need and now here we get all the rows in here after that we're going to check if the all users count is equal to zero or rows count is equal to zero we want to return I mean there's an error because it's not there's a user there cannot be empty row because defaultly when you create an account you are assigned to a user row so defaultly you must have an account a row attached to so if this happens it means there's a problem somewhere else then they need to contact me as a developer now check here you see we have the user is equal to new list of manager we are looking through all lists of users then grabbing the data gra grabbing each row so you can see user row is equal to first of all, default user id is equal to user the id from this user rows this is going to handle with this row id and a user id when you have the user id or the row id you have to get a row name because that's what we need so get a row name from all rows whereby the row id okay this is not user so this is going to be the row id so row id is equal to user the row id okay then we retrieve and say we're going to create a new instance of this manage user whereby we're going to have the user id name email address and the row name in here then at the end of the day we return the user as a list that's what we are doing the next one that we're doing here is once you have the get users we can also have update user so in update user what are we doing it is returning just a general response we pass in the, the we accept the payload and now we check from this system rows okay if the name here is equal to the row so you are checking from the rows if the row coming in from this user row it is found in there if it is it means the user is found that you want to grab the the user so get the user id is equal to the user id from this row user row okay so see what you are doing we are having this user coming in with an user id now we have this so here once we retrieve this user id in here we can have the user id from this isn't it now we want to get the user rows this user rows contains the user id and the row id so we want to grab the user from this so here user row dot where you that user id this from the column from this user row is equal to this user coming in as a payload dot id when we retrieve it then the row that we are getting it from the new database from the system rows we want to update it so you see user row dot row id is equal to this get row dot id this get row so you want to get that and now we can retrieve it or update it here after that you can save changes and now return this row user row updated successfully so that's what we are doing so here user is updating only the row not any information only row so switching from admin to user or user to admin that is it you cannot change the email you cannot change the password you cannot change anything okay that's what the system is going to do so even your admin are limited you don't have all the the capabilities in doing everything no it's only the the, uh, the developer who can do that <laughs> okay so that's for the update and then the last one okay that's the last one we have the delete no we have get rows so for get rows we want to call this method so call this system rows because this system row is going to have all the rows so call it instead of using the contest again no oops use that and now aside from that the next one here is a delete so if i want to delete then you know the application is that table contains the user info so you're going to make a search from that and now delete it so id application user find it when you get it deleted save changes and i return user successfully deleted so that's what we are doing let's go in there and now add our endpoint so we go to the solution and i'll try to add our controller endpoint to this so you know where controller is found isn't it go to the server then here from the controller authentication controller 
we have basically have only up to refresh token we're going to add the next one and that's going to be the users so to get all users an api commas made to this we call the account service get all users then we have to update user so to update user we have to call this endpoint then update the user in here then the next one is um, to get all rows call the same endpoint to get all rows and the next one is to delete user so call this endpoint to delete user now you know that the http web here some of them they have the, these are the routes specified these are specific route that you need to specify and these are the parameters that you need to specify as well and the idea the parameter here must sync with what we have in here okay save this and now our endpoint is ready so let's have a look let's run the server and i'll see so save all Set, click on the server then debug and i'll start with the debugging all right so let's see the endpoint is ready now we go for the authentication section you know we have this update arrows and now delete right get all users so if i click on this right this uh, let's see what it's going to do oh so we have an error 404 not found why not found because we did not add header to this this, uh, this is protected so we are not having that we can do that from an endpoint from an endpoint where we have or from the client where we can have access to this okay because when you check here we are not having this authorized attribute to include the bar token here so let's see we let's consume this in the client and now everything is going to work well trust me so now when you go to this user dialog i think this myself to see now let's see from this user page where is it there you go so you see this is now it's working now let's run the client so the app is ready now let me open it widely management and if i click on no administration and our user we have not linked this you see you see this yes let's let's do this quickly so we go to the home page and now here we need to include the user user page i'm going to cut all this And now with this, let me move this out. You want to have a home page as much as simple and readable. So we don't want to include all this whereby we have the appropriate place to include them. You go to the import. Then let's also add it here. Let's reload this. Okay, so here too, I believe user page, we did not include that. Have you see? User page, user. We did not add the UI. So let's see. So now let's navigate to the user page. And now in here, we have a UI with the same. And as you can see from this, we have the same column, ID, name, email, row, and action based on the properties in the manage user uh, model. So you can see we're displaying them in here. And now we have the click, that is an edit. And I'm delete. When you come down here, this manage manage user is a list and system rules is also a list. Um get this method from here. You see we are getting them, get users, and now I've explained this earlier on. So this is a UI that we are creating or we have created. Uh, we, we are creating or we have created. Yes. So let's see. If I try to run this again, let's see what we're gonna have. All right, so the app is ready, but you see we have an error here, but don't mind. Let's click on, let's log out. And we're going to log in again. So log in here. I'm not sure, user not found yet. So let's create a new user. Um, let me use Netcode. So I have this password. One, two, three. That's what I'm using. So let's wait. Account created. Yes, update it. Sign in. Then here, log in. And okay, so successfully logged in. 
and let's wait for this to get loaded okay let's go to administration click on user and i can see we have one user in here right there's an admin let's log this out we are going to create another account and let's see so create account in here user this is not net code this may be code academy then it's user one password one two three one two three register created guy sign in email so user one login okay got it now have a look here if i go to use i'm going to have two so you can see you have users right let's add last one log out register user so this is let's say let me use my name frederick and i have it as three password password register created got it sign in use this user three the same password successful login got it administration user so you can see we have three right let me log in as admin so this is frederick now you can see here i am although i'm not an admin but i can see this so maybe later i'm going to protect this page only admin can have access to this administration but with this if there is i want to change this to an admin check see if i click on this this i must have the dialogue but i'm not having it why out of the delete i just want to do this no dialogue open dialogue open dialogue it is not working let's have a let's cross check so from this is a dialogue we have it in here okay so this is a user dialogue and um, this uh, open dialogue is visible to true state has changed that's fine we have it in here manage users user page we have this but we do not have instance of that right so let's have the instance here let's space it we provide the manage user system rules over here as a list list and now there's an handle save or handle update okay we have this instance of user dialogue service and that's what we are using it here to open a dialogue aside from that we have this um manage user as a payload and we update it now let's save this let's refresh this so let's open this so administration users and let's say so if i click on this user i must have yes so you can see the name is is disabled email disabled is only the row i can now have access to two rows i choose the admin click on save it has now changed to admin so if this person logs out and i log in again all the administrative features the person is going to see i can also change it back so let's say to user save it yes back to user i can delete this let me delete this code academy so delete this and delete it and it's off so we are done with the management user management okay that's what the admin can do only the admin now we go back to the main boss and that is the employee so let's close this up then you're going to work on the employees so let's close all these tabs and we have to create the interface for the employees in the server so we go to servers uh, that's data access layer from the server library where implementation because this is also going to help from the generic interface that we created now this is going to be employee repository so let's add this now in here 
you know we have to inherit from the same interface and I specify the t value so we do that we pass in the db contest as well then for delete we do the same so for delete then employees find then not found commit and now success it is the same method that we are going to use so here let me also grab this and this is what we've been doing from the previous video so you know what i mean it is the same for employees check name and etc so here from that is for the delete let's have a look with the next one get all employees then get all employees you're going to have it here so you can see it's a list of employees then we are including all this so we first be, be as, as no tracking then we include town town has a relationship with city so then include city has a relationship with country then include then when we come to branch branch has a relationship with department department with general department so it's in a hierarchical form that we are including or we can retrieve all data so based on the employee we can retrieve employees town employees city employees country employees branch employees department and employees general department i believe you love this right that's fine that's what we are doing aside from that we can get by id so um get by id we get the user by id the same thing you get by id and i return then update no insertion or add so we do same the next one is an update so with update we have to do the same but here let's try this and see first we want to update the user we want to check if when you try the updates user will work but for this i'm not sure the relationship will work so we have to uh, manage it ourselves so let's have a look on that so instead of doing this we can just use this mapping so we don't have any issue again <laughs> okay so we have this set and we now commit uh, commit this we return um the success okay now that's all that we need to do here for this user we save this and now we can go ahead and I'll create a controller for this user so for the controller we go to the controllers folder then we're going to create a controller known as employee controller so solution explorer then right click on the controller let's add a new controller now this is going to be employee for an api mt1 employee controller and now in that you know since you're going to also inherit from the generic controller that we created so you specify in the the employee to the interface and as and that is all to the implementation too and that's what that we are doing okay so when we run this let's test this api out and i'll see so if I right click on the employee, the server, go to debug, start without debugging, and I'll let's have a look. But I'm sure you're gonna have an issue. Do you know the reason why? Because you have not created dependency injection. There's no registration done to the endpoint that we created. So definitely when this runs, you're gonna have a problem with this. So quickly, we have to include employees maybe if you haven't let's check and see solution server program.cs file let's see if we have it okay so we did not we have to include this in here from this employee and at the employee repository we have to include that as well okay so with this we can now save this and I run this again. So this is ready. Now from authentication, branch, city, country, department, we have employee, then department, town, weather, close it. This is what we need. So if I click on try this out, let's see what we have. So it is not right because we have not added anything yet yes and we can do that so let's go to the ui and i'm trying to consume this um, and add some employee to this 
so let's close this up then let's go to the client and then here from the pages content pages you're going to create another page known as the employee pages so here you can see this is the layout we have our pages content pages so user pages now let's create another folder here so right click now add a new folder to this and there's going to be employee pages inside that you're going to have add employee add or update employee component so add or update employee maybe you can add a page to this then you can also have um, employee page this add or update employee is going to be um, a chart component to this employee page we are not going to create you're not going to use a dialog box for now we're going to use a different thing together now let's see what we can do we want to have in the group session as soon as you finish the first one click on the next one you want to hide or you want to show the second one and maybe you're going to have some little bit indicator on top as you can load as soon as the user starts to type that is what we want to do something like that so let's have a look on how to work with the workaround so with this we also go to when you check this all state you can see we have show employee down here so show employee right so um the first thing to do here is we this page also going to inherit from this component uh, i disposable interface and you want to say if show employee is true that is only when we want to display this now even with this add we want to also say that if show or add is true that is when you want to display if you don't understand it don't worry you're going to get, it's going to be clear to you later on okay so control kd we have it in here so it is going to be the the public one the general one to show the employee page and also the add or update employee page but the, the second one is going to be used inside the employee page the parent page so you can hide and show this all the time now within this you're going to have a container now in our container this is what you're going to have and it's going to be a container in the middle then we're going to have the first one is going to have our row so inside the container let's have this row so we have column lg1 and lg6 the one here is going to handle with uh, using this x large that's for close so to close form because we are building the form then if this is clicked that's what you want to do so maybe down here you can see we have this close form here as a button click which we are binding it to this icon that's an i so we have this add employee as a header that's going to be the first row then in the next row we want to have the first line so the next row here okay so let's have this a class row then in that we can close this now in the second row we want to have this this in here and now we is going to load here just a bootstrap class that you're going to attach to so you're going to have them load on top as soon as the user types in I'll finish the first page and I'll click on the next page now that page has to, this has to get loaded so I need it as first layer and a second layer okay when I when we get to the view it's going to make better or clear too now aside from that we have um, this and you know it's an H tag format so it's going to be in a horizontal format okay so control period and K you can format this well so in here at the end we're going to have employee one so you know you see there is the end of this so this is a stack this is a column row one so at the end of this 
we're going to have the first layer from this employee section and let's see for this what we need here it is so you know this is just an, a row and this is taking the lg12 so at the end of this you can also have you can also extend another lg12 so here you're going to be the employee employee form okay which include the first and then the second layer so here and this i'm going to do then if you check this check here what i have now this is just a column lg12 it's a container fluid now first layer if it is true they want to display this it's an edit form whereby we have this employee groupings so we have group one and we have group two the form here we have form one and form two okay that's what i'm doing now this is just a row and i call them lg2 and as you can see from here if i minimize this we have from lg2 we have column lg4 making six then we have column lg2 making eight so let's see all must be 10 so all must be 12 so 2 4 6 we have um 4 here right making 10 and now 2 making 12 so you're going to have in the um the whole um this is going to be horizontal right yes so we have that in there and now within each we see we have this uh, edit form 1 and we have edit form 2 okay so we have within the form 1 what do we have in here so you can see from this it means we have to um create this group okay so you can have group one and group two all right let's put that in the dto so you go to solution where you have the dtos you're going to right click on this you're going to add a new class to this then here we are going to paste it in here as employee group one let's create this class then inside this we're going to divide the employee page the employee model into two so let's meet as public maybe there are several ways that you can implement this okay this is one so we have to include this we have the name address telephone number photo server id and 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 file number now let's create the next group and that's going to be employee group two so you can just copy this then let's go to the solution now the same DTO, we can add another one, and it's gonna be group two. So we are grouping them. Group two. Now inside group two, what can we have? We're gonna also pass the next one. That is a rest, and this is gonna be public. And you're gonna have the job name, the range. That, that's a branch ID the town id and now the other okay so this is what we need to um add then let's save this so when you go back to this add page you can see we have this employee model that's the model one so the property that we have in there that's what we are assigning to this we have the input test for the name we have telephone number we have address as a test area okay we have validation message in it and when if it is submitted or when if it is clicked you want to submit to this form one all right so let's see what we're doing and the next one here we are dividing this into since it's a column edge 12 we are dividing this into first two second four so there's a second four then we have the next four with this and that is the next one so it's an other information the first one here is going to be the personal information we have you can see that we have personal information with this as you can see from your personal information then this is going to be the other information so here we're going to use the test input test civil id file number and a photo photo later on you're going to modify this this is going to be um a, an input file that is i have to select a picture here but for now you want to use a test box for testing purpose later on we're going to do that convert to basically four string and i'll save it to database but for now let's maintain this and we have the submit button and as you see we have this a uh, nest so this button here we say nest when i click on this i'm going to submit it to 
this form that's a form one this okay i'm going to submit to that form so this is going to give us a form one now we have the convergy 12 to make it 12 so if i also minimize this we have 2442 making 12. okay that is the first layer when it comes to second layer we're also doing the same form two and there's a model employee group two and then here it is 2442 the same thing job information we need the job name as you can see from here job name then here we need the department before a user can select branch the user first must first select the department general department then select the department itself and now can have access to the uh, branch the same thing applies to selecting location the town you need to select country first then you're going to have access to the cities then kind of going to have access to the town so that's a cascaded drop down that we are creating okay so here we are going to check something here like if general department name is equal to null then display select general department else you want to display this selected general department equal to this so you're going to use this for both the top one is going to be used when you want to update it okay so as soon as you click on update this is going to display as you can see from here we're going to display the department name in case it is not equal to null here we do same to the next one that's the department name so here is going to be the general department name this department name and this or the employee name so from the not the employee from the branch from the branch we can retrieve this from the employee model that is coming in here okay so you're going to work on that later on but for now you want to have you want to focus only on the the ad so we have all this and when you check this we have select town then we can now select town and this is the branch the t item is a branch and now the t item two for this is a branch which has this on branch value change so if we select any um list drop down value from this this method is going to get fired this one going to get fired so we can retrieve the id of them okay now we also have a button known as previews so there's going to be a previous one so since we have two forms that we are showing we want to show one at a time so we can navigate from back and our previous so if i click on the previous one this is what this is the method that i want to call okay to navigate to the previous one and at the next one here we have the next one column rg4 there's a location information and we say this for the country we have this for the city and then we have this for the town you see then we have the other form here and we have submit type of what save we have from lg2 and lg2 in here this shouldn't be here so we have 2442 for this um uh, view too so if i this you see there's a two four and then there's also four in here so check this up so you see that we have two four four two as two four four two the same thing right and this is our edit form edit form okay now let's handle the the code section let's save this now from the code section what are we to do we first have our styles in here that's what we're going to be using so we have inactive span and inactive div and as you can see so we have this inactive div that's what you're using in here if you check this we have the floating number we have floating number one floating div one floating number two and now floating div two and now we have the same thing in here now i want to check these are css that we have created and we're going to be adding these css names to the variables that we're going to create okay so let's have them created so from the code section we first have this so floating number one we add it to the css class as you can see so we assign them to various um css class now when you check this we have a parameter show add or update employee this is going to be managed by the the parent component not this uh, the container the state container rather it's going to be the parent components okay so that i can just toggle between the target the show and height for this add or update employee okay so we have the first layer second layer and defaultly first layer is set to true so meaning when you run the application 
you want to see the first form then as soon as you click on the next if it is filled correctly we're going to see the next one it's going to handle this so how do we toggle between let's have a method to toggle between um this form to hide and show so we have these two method here to handle that okay so if show layer 2 is clicked you want to set oh this must be in okay so when you check here show layer 2 then we want to set this first layer to false and the second layer to true so you are using the true false to just hide and show them if i click on previous then here layer 1 is set to false layer 1 is going to be true and the second is going to be what false because previous may go to the start one so that's the form in here okay let's save this and this is what we're going to do let's use this in the page so we go to we have to create the employee page so we can use this in there now let's go to the pages employee pages and now let's add another component this is going to be employee page so for this component we're going to be using syncfusion data grid okay so let's go to let's install this we go to the client dependencies we actually go to menu get packages and now in here we need syncfusion data um grid okay so that is this one syncfusion dot blazer dot grid so data grid this is what we need to install i go for my preferred version 23.1.36 now let's install this okay so it is installed successfully you can now close this now when it comes to this we have to get list of employees so we are going to retrieve the whole list of employees from here as employees now in that when the page loads or when the page initializes we want to call this employee list okay so employee list then once you have this employee list we want to look through the employee list that we have and now set them to the data as a data source to the data grid that we have um, installed so we're going to implement an interface for this and now that interface is going to handle with the um, state container that we have created since you're using our state does show employee okay and now in here we also have show main page in here so we're going to toggle between this page and now the add or added employee page so we can show main page you can show we can add employee you can also show main page and do a whole lot okay so back and forth back and forth but as soon as i click on department then all state or department or share employees going to set to off which is going to show all the pages that's the two component um as the the employee and add em, add employee it's going to hide them and i display the third component that has been um set to true with eight property okay so we need to in the page load we need to initialize this so let's subscribe to this event when the page loads first then we come back here so when the page loads you can see we subscribe to this and now we load employee so we're going to remove this for now we load this employee and that is this method so it's better that this method can be needed okay so we load this employee get all employee then you pass in the employee base url all right so once you have this when the page is about to die we need to also um, unsubscribe to it and that's what we need to do okay now let's go through this we are using this sf data grid we need to include data blazer.grid you can just move this up then go to the import and paste it in there
Okay, so let's go back. From the employee page, we have this data grid. is a source of employee. That is a list. In here, we are specifying columns. So first, it's going to be the employee image. We have the context as employee. Then we can retrieve the image. But for now, the image is null. So we're going to do that later on. This add. If I click on this, I want to show add or update employee button clicked. So this is a button that I am clicking on. I can just move this to the next line. Okay. And we are using an icon to handle that. So it's displaying an icon as um, B a bootstrap icon plus circle dash dotted. That is what we are using as an icon for this as add employee. Then we have we specify the grid column. So this is the various food that you want to display. Then civil so ID, file name, employee name, telephone number, job name, um, branch, and our town ID. But this is not a town name, okay? So later on, if the user clicks on any of the employee want to view detail, that is where we're going to retrieve all the general department, the department, the branch, the country, the city, the town. We're going to retrieve all of them and add it to or display it under the user's um, details. Okay, but for now, these are the header test that we specified, and that is all. So this is all that we, uh, we need to do for now, okay? But when we run this, this is going to get us a list of employees in that. But since you're not going to have any employee yet, we cannot see anything. But let's have a look on the Add or Update button click. So if I click on Add or Update button, what am I doing? I want to hide this and I'll show the form. That is the Add form. I want to hide the main page and I'll show the Add or Update form. So in here, we can create a method down here. This will be down. So we can create this method. Now this method is going to have show main page and now show add or update page. So this is set to true defaultly and this is set to false automatically or initially. If I click on this button, then change the, the settings. So we do that in here. And that's going to affect the view. Okay. So this is all that we need to do for now. Let's save this. And now let's see, go to the home page. Let's include this employee. Okay, so in here, let's add this employee page. So let's put this to the, the import. Let's cut this. We go to the import. Now let's paste it here. Now when you go back to this home page, you have the employee page in here. When you go back to the employee page, we need to specify the, the other page in here. That's an add or update component. We need to add that. So in here, we're going to say add or update employee page. You need to add it like that. I know when you go to this add or update employee, it requires some parameters that we need to specify. Let's see if it does. It needs this show or update employee. So with this, we go to the home page, not the home page, employee page. And now in here, show or we have to assign a value to this. So that is show or update, and that is the value that this method so show or update page. So let's grab this and I'll paste it here. So the, the value of this is going to set automatically to this. Okay, to and to show in this page. So when you check this well, you can see that when the page loads initially, add is set to false. So this is going to be false, it's not going to be shown. As soon as I click on add employee, that is where I want to show this add or update employee page okay save this let's run this so we have an error here let's check it out now let's see it's saying that this page does not exist does not implement this i disposable page so add or update it has to since we have this i disposable you have to inherit this 
you have to implement it in here so from the when the page loads now here we can have this method as override initialize and in here we can see we add it now when the page is about to die too we have to unsubscribe to this method then that will be all so let's save this okay so we unsubscribe as well i believe for him soft but let's see we name it get for car request and up okay so here we do not have this method anymore and now let's see from this okay so let's see saying hasn't been captured before okay so now let's restart this up let me close all this okay now let's run the server after that we're going to run the client too let's run the client too so before we run this let's see let's have to um rectify some few problems in here and you go down here you can see our form we have this closed form so this closed form when you come here we are going to use it in the parent component so we want to notify the parent that the form has been closed and if the form has been closed then you want to hide the child and display the component the the parent okay showing that you're going to have an event callback which has no return type then we as soon as you click on this button we are going to invoke it and now set this to false okay so we can retrieve it in the parent and now perform an action in the parent later on okay Aside from that, let's have a look. When you go to this employee page, we have this employees. Let's specify the property for the grouping. That's for the employee grouping one and now the grouping two. And now this has to come inside the add or update employee. So that is where we need to specify the groups. So I think these are going to be parameter so we have to get an employee group in one then we create an instance and a group in two we also create an instance here okay so when you also check this the drop down that we have in here you can see this drop down contains the following so even with this this label we can just comment this for now when you get to the update section then we can update it from there Okay, so let's let me also comment this. The comments are here. Out. All right, so you can see from here that this is coming from the general department. And now, if you click on this button, check this. It's coming from this on general department uh, value change. And now, check here on department value change, it is coming here, which are the data source of department and general department. So it means that we need to specify the list of this general department department and our branch right we also do have to, we also have to do same to countries cities and our towns okay so now to do that we're going to have maybe um this department countries down here let's have it down here maybe we can minimize this css then where we have all this That is for the country, city, and now towns. So we're going to provide these um, values or these models here from the parent component. We need to also do the same for the department as well. So we have our department, general department, and we have branch. Okay. So that's all we need to do. Aside from that, since we have our employee group in here we need to also add our employee itself this is what you're going to use to invoke the method 
So maybe we can put this on top here. Okay. Now let's go to this um, change event happens. If in case they do happen, when you click on any of them, what do you want to do? We want to invoke this method. So for country, city, and our town, we create this method and I invoke it or handle that here. So from country, city, and now the town, let's have a method down here to handle this. So with this, country, city, and our town, handle country um, selected event, we invoke the ID. Here to we invoke the city name. And now here we also invoke the town ID. You see? Then we are not actually invoking this, but that we are storing this employee group in two dot town ID is equal to this. This is for the town. This is gonna have access to the integer as an ID. Then the next one here is gonna be the employee. So for this employee, we can have it down here. And you know it is the same thing that you're doing. We invoke it by ID. We also pass in the department by ID and also by branch in here we store it, this. Now the reason why we do not invoke here it is we don't need to invoke it. The reason is check here. Now the first one, this is the department. We are passing in the department ID. When it gets to the parent table, we are going to search your department and now retrieve all departments which have the general ID as equal to what is coming in. Then we populate that list to the department. Aside from that, when if I click on department two, we want to populate all list the department that I'm going to select. We're going to populate all list in there from the branch and also return it in the drop down so that the user can now select from the department. So without selecting country, you cannot select city. Without selecting city, you cannot select a town. Without selecting general department, you cannot select department. Without selecting department, you cannot select uh, um, town. Because these are cascading. And one must work before the other. Okay. So this that's what we are doing in here. And at the end of the day, we want to get only the branch ID. Because that's what you are interested in. For the first two, we bring it for the user to have access to. Okay. But what we need here is a branch ID and the user ID. All right, so let's save this. Also, when you check the error list, you see we have this form. We did not issue a method to handle that. Okay, so for now, we have form one and form two. We have to handle this form down here. So let's see. There's going to be the forms. So one and two, not one and one, one and two. So the first one is a form one, and this is gonna be maybe an async. For now, let's have it as void. Form one. Okay, they're gonna have the same form two. Okay, so that is what we're gonna do. Um, for now, we are not implementing anything yet. We are not invoking the method inside the parent component. We rather want to um, test it and see the UI how it's going to look like. Let's run this and see whether you have any other error to work on it. All right, so the app is ready. Now let's click on um, management. Click on employees. And now let's wait and see. Okay, so you can see we have this table form and this are data grid. And currently we have this employee image, ID, file name, name, telephone, job, name, branch, and our town. No records to display. If I click on add employee, you can see this is a form that we have built manually. We have this the whole column LG12. We divided it here so we can have the displayed like this. Okay. Now this is a clue. If I click on this, that is this is going to be handled by the parent. So this is from the uh, child. 
If I click on this, it must send a signal to the parent that you want to hide this and display the list. So for now, you can see it is it is gone, but the parent did not get displayed the list. So you're going to also handle that in the near future in the next video. Also, um, let's see, let me phrase this again. So another one is let's click on the same management, go to the employees. Once you have the list popped up, um, click on add employee. And I, I, if I click on this next, you can see this form you need to fill up, right? And unless I'm done, so you see, if I'm done filling this up, then I click on next, then I have to navigate to the next page. But for now, if I navigate to the next page, this page must get, this side must get loaded. And then the background color must change from gray to this, is it light blue or etc. It must change to this color, right? So that's what we're going to implement next. So for now, this is what we are doing. I think we've, we've, we've worked on it so far. We've spent many hours to, to handle this. This employee is going to be the next one. We're going to add all the data here to the local, to the database. And also we can make a query and I can display all the list here in the data grid. We can also make a search. We can make a sort. We're going to apply pagination to you as well. And later on, you're going to add an export to, um, PDF or even Word. Then we see how to print it out. Then, then we are done. So for now, this is what you're going to learn here. And let's all rest for a while. Thank you so much for watching this video. It has been so many hours of coding here. Yeah, trust me. Um, it is something that we need to do. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this. And I hope I'm going to catch you up in the next video.